Oh, dear. You have to feel comfortable to be comfortable with your feelings. Oh, wow. That's an opener. You're off the hook this week. Yeah, I know he earned it. Do you want to start us off anyways? Or Hello and welcome to episode 41 of Oh Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage. Gotcha. Uh, coming to you as always from Communal Creative Studios in the heart of downtown Red Deer. Uh, this episode sponsored by the Red Deer and District Chamber. As you know, we do a, just a little bit of work with them. So I'm uh, very excited to have a long-awaited interview with Chamber CEO Scott Robinson, who has about nine 9,000 different ties to, to Red Deer and all of us on the podcast as well. So a lot to talk about with him. That's coming up in just a little bit. A special <laughs> hello. Have you gone to the doctor? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. It almost feels, people might think we record like nine episodes all in one night, but no, Aaron, Aaron is still sick. We'll get to her. Sick again. Yeah, sick, sick again. Mm. Uh, special hello once again. Are, are you good? I don't know. <laughs> one more time. A special hello again to our Rogers TV audience, uh, if we even have one at this point. Uh, but now, not only is this the fourth installment of uh, Oh Dear on Rogers TV, but we've somehow expanded our reach. Uh, now this podcast is going to be aired on Rogers TV in Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, uh, Fort McMurray, I think eventually Lloyd Minster and the Edson Hinton area as well. So uh, probably other few places I'm not aware of. But hey, the amount of people who can watch us is growing. I think the amount of people that do watch us probably going to stay the same, but uh, pretty fun. Nonetheless. Yeah, you guys are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, I'm Ted Emmett. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Uh, not quite a full house again tonight. I will take the blame, though, for Dustin not being part of this episode because a week ago we were all set to go. He was actually going to show up two times in a row, which is a, a miracle. And then I caught the plague, but uh, I'm also uh, can teach Aaron how to get over a cold. <laughs> yeah, my point exactly. <coughs> But uh, I'm feeling good, but Dustin couldn't make it tonight, but uh, don't think any of us are surprised. Uh, someone who is here, though, that probably wouldn't have been here last week, uh, so it, it worked out at least in your favor. Uh, Kevin Walsh, uh, welcome back. Yeah, thanks for rescheduling on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Things are good. School's back in session. Kids are busy learning and getting sick as well. But yeah, it's been a great start to the fall and the, the weather's still beautiful. So uh, enjoying that while we can. And uh, no surprise that <laughs> I think everyone knows who's at the table next to me as I'm just absolutely covered in germs. But uh, now people don't believe us. They didn't believe us. We always joke that she takes us off the rails in this podcast more than anyone. If you listen to last episode <laughs> and we have a lot of cut material that uh, didn't make it that will show you to prove just how uh, much she takes us off the rails. Uh, co-worker Aaron, welcome back. Let, let's tighten it up a little bit tonight. Uh, well, I'm drinking Perrier, so that should help a little Can bit. Can we talk about your lineup if you have like a, a lozenge and a lineup of mints here? It honestly, it honestly looks like you bought that in the parking lot on your way up. <laughs> I mean, I could have. <laughs> But uh, no, I had a cough for all of July and August and then I got better and then my daughter went to daycare and now it's back and I feel great, but I have a really bad cough mm, no. and I'm so sorry. Oh, you can barely notice. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that was funnier than we than our reaction uh, hey on that note though ryan lund just keep on going yeah i'm still here uh, it's good to be back i mean i never left but it does feel like a new season um it's yeah kind of we're kind of going with the hockey schedule here so mm. hopefully we can win the podcast championship this year and <laughs> and take her home so uh looking forward to uh to what we have in store. I don't even know what we have in store, but it's going to be fun. Uh, now, some controversy last time when it came to who sat at the table, who sat on the couch. Uh, probably going to be, uh, oh no, this is these are my old notes because things have changed. I wrote this that uh, the athlete Kevin Strybosch had to be on the couch tonight, but with uh, Andrew Russell dropping out last minute, <laughs> I was going to have you two on the couch together, but obviously we're not putting you there uh, by yourself. So, hey, welcome back to the table. Thank you. I would almost rather be on the couch, I think. It's, it's, I've just gotten so used to it, but you know, you just, you persevere and you show up every week and next thing you know, you're at the table. Um, also, I think Erin traded in her booze habit from last uh, episode to a drug habit now <laughs> her, her because habit. there's a lot of pills sitting in front of me and in front of her. They're mostly mints. Mm -hmm. Mostly so, mints. So for our TV audience, mm. they're mints. Yeah. And sipa call. Yeah. And by by booze habit, it was one beer that just well, yeah. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I was a little, I had an empty stomach. Yeah. <laughs> See, never never an issue with me. 
See, Lundy, you should learn a lesson from Kev here. Like, he perseveres. No matter what, he shows up every week. He gets the job. Oh, that's you show I mean, up for one episode, know, and then yeah. you don't get the job. You need a guy like me to win the podcast championship. <laughs> yeah. that, hey, that's why we called you up to the big table. We also need other people to, like, run against for this podcast champion. We've been unopposed for years and still never won. <laughs> we finished, like, fourth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but this is our year. I can feel it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like we mentioned, Andrew Russell also not here tonight. But, uh, of course, our customary thank you to Riley from Communal Creative Studios for having us all here once again. And, uh, hey, uh, great job. I haven't used a bleep yet. So, great job on not being just an absolute fucking distraction last time we were here. That was awesome. Keep it up. Do you, do you need a, to throw a bleep in? or? Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck you, Riley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no. Riley's pretty cool. But keep it down, hey? Good. <laughs> Good. He didn't fall for my trap. Okay, this podcast brought to you by a lot of awkward silence, which is pretty rare around here. Uh, my goodness, Kate, we must lose so many people right off the hop to this intro. But uh, anyways, let's officially get this show on the road with The Glad Game. The Glad Game is brought to you by Alberta Asian Motor Works and Alberta European Motor Works, family owned and operated in Red Deer for over 15 years, offering full service for all Asian and European makes and models. Learn more at AEMW.com and AAMWRD.com and follow them on social media. I, I Fucking guess, uh, nailed yeah, it. That was good, yeah. yeah. It took like 800 coughs <laughs> before, but uh, yeah, that, that was one tape. I have to give you credit for that one. A quick shout out to Mike Pazman and uh, especially at Alberta European Motor Works, where I think it was the end of June, maybe the beginning of July that I realized I still have my winter tires on. So they uh, <laughs> they fit me in there real quick. But a reminder too, to start booking, I, I <laughs> booking those appointments early because I also always get to like the third snowfall and I can't get in to get my winter tires on because they're too busy. But we all know that coworker, that person that maybe puts them on a little too early. And then like the next day, there's a snowstorm. Yeah, yeah. That's true. So you don't want to be that person. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do want to be that person because you're going to be the most ready. prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to take off your winter tires too early because that's when the snowstorm happens in the spring. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's what you're talking about. Yeah. You've done this before. Yeah. I've yeah. been that person. <laughs> Um, okay, for the Glad game, a pretty easy one to talk about is actually uh, today, Dustin, who, uh, yeah, he had a big day, so he's probably tired too, he's not here, but uh, the Outreach Center's annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event was today. Uh, this is my third time taking part. I know uh, for the athlete, this was your second time. Number two. And uh, Lundy came down this year too, walked for the first time, but I know this is, I think it's the 13th annual, so we can only give Dustin so much credit, but he took an existing event and, and did a great job. But uh, you know what? Everyone has a, a couple different uh, types of soreness now but uh, a really good day and it is uh, such a great event for a great cause yeah no i like like you said my first go at it um i know when we were chatting with scott earlier he said he came later, up with, later later uh, sorry i know when we were, <laughs> i know when we were chatting with scott later he said he said he came up he, he's going to say he came up with the idea of taping, like using hockey tape to tape your high heels. And I, I used that today and it worked fantastic. My toes were, my feet are just too fat for those <laughs> shoes, but my feet are fine now. My calves are burning still. So we'll see how they feel tomorrow. But God, I got to give a lot, of, a lot of credit to you ladies, Aaron. I don't know how you do it. Or why. Yeah, yeah or why you do it. What is it? I kept hearing today, pain is beauty. Like My mom would tell me suffer to be beautiful yeah. as she tried to brush my hair when I was little. Yeah. And honestly, <laughs> that's just kind of just, a lot of things that we like to do for uh, looking the way we want to look. Yeah. Today we got about I don't know. We were probably about 47 seconds into the walk and Lund with his arms out goes, you know what? It's just not worth it to be six feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll take my flats, please. <laughs> I will say when you are in correct fitting mm. high oh, heels, okay. oh. it makes a difference. And there's all sorts of little things you can do. I find high heels very comfortable. I can wear them all day. Wow. Um, but yet you wear pajamas to the podcast. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's not all suffer to be beautiful. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I get it. I can be yeah. beautiful and cozy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I can be cozy. Yeah, Just be you. Yeah. I got nothing else. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, and you know who you know who I looked like today struggled the most is a may, maybe having an athletic frame doesn't help you in this. But Strybosh, you you're having a bit of, a bit of trouble today. Yeah, I don't know if it was last year. I felt like I just was flying through, even to the point where at one point this week I had a five second thought of like maybe I should like try to win this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then five Classic. seconds later, I was like, mm, no, that's a terrible idea. Yeah. And then 
I started walking and we got to the first corner and I was like, I got to do four more laps yeah. of this. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm going to die and then leave it to Dustin to like do the math on how far a mile is. Yeah. And meanwhile, on my Apple watch, I'm at two and a half kilometers at the end of this thing. <laughs> so my feet were just killing me. Yeah. I think we did like a mile and a third today. Yeah. But, uh, and for those of you not familiar with walk a mile in her shoes, it, it goes on, I know like all over the place and it, it is uh, to raise money uh, in this case for the outreach center, but also a lot of awareness uh, for gender-based violence and, and domestic violence. So it is an important day. And that's the point, right? Is we're supposed to be uncomfortable. It's only, only for a half hour. I mean, hence the name walk a mile in her shoes. But I think too, uh, the, the glad game part of this is, uh, you know, you see a lot of uh, familiar faces out there. Um, like Scott will say in a, in a little bit, uh, this is like the first year that, that he's missed it to always run into him there. But people really come out and uh, they put their pride and ego away and they just go out and, and have fun. People dress up and, and a lot of local businesses too uh, support this event pretty heavily. So, and, and uh, I hate to say it, Dustin does do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> he, he really does. Yeah, he, he's great at planning events. So he's definitely found like the perfect role for him. So uh, just a, another quick shout out to the Outreach Center while we're on it. Myself and some members at MMP, we were able to go uh, help stuff the Tools for Schools backpacks a couple mm. weeks ago for the start of school. Um, I can't remember what the total number of what they packed in total, but uh, it was an incredible experience. It was actually a lot of fun to go in there and pack those. We're all we're all like the typical accountants. So it was nice to like mm. put the things in the, in the bag where they belong, <laughs> yeah. just like we do with the numbers. So um, we all really enjoyed it. And uh, it was really cool to see, you know, sit in that room with all the school supplies that the community has like come together to purchase. And it was pretty incredible. So shout out to them. Yeah, they do. I mean, they do so many things too, right? Obviously the lip sync battle coming up in the window. Our uh, virtual, by the time this comes out, our virtual lip sync battle video should be out or almost, I've been afraid to edit it because I just don't even want to want to look at it. But I know there's uh, lots of submissions coming in there. Probably at this point too late to submit one, but there's going to be voting going on. So make sure uh, follow lip sync battle out of the outreach center as well on social media. And uh, hey, we're, we're going to need your vote. I'll tell you that much because I don't think we're getting through on, on style points alone. All right, on that note, uh, time to head to our feature interview uh, again with someone who has walked many miles in those high heels over the years, like I mentioned, uh, but not this year, but hey, he needed a break. Uh, like I said, off the top of the show, uh, this episode is sponsored by the Red Deer District Chamber, uh, and we had CEO Scott Robinson. Uh, he's still here. This is a, this is where Lund gets confused. He's here watching right now, but now we're going to throw to the interview that we recorded earlier. Got it? Is, is, Scott, is Scott talking right now, or has he already talked? Then we'll, just, we'll play the interview. All right. Well, very happy to be joined. <laughs> that was a good plow. Okay. Now we're set. Now, now you can go. <laughs> this, that's a good uh, depiction of what you're in for here, Scott. Uh, very happy to be joined by the CEO of the Red Deer and District Chamber of Commerce, Scott Robinson. And we'll get into a bit, in a way, uh, for the eight of you who actually still listen to this podcast, a bit of a, a savior of the podcast. But uh, Scott, thanks for being here tonight. Hey, no, it's great to be here. It's been a dream, to be honest, <laughs> to be on this podcast ever since I first saw it. So uh, I'm honored to be here. And uh Little ticked off. Dustin's not here, so he'll he'll get his later. But that's okay. It's get important. To it. yeah, yeah, it's important to have realistic dreams, Scott. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, congrats. Yeah. Hey, this is this is Red Deer. So yeah. you really aimed low. Yeah. yeah. Hey, like my parents always say, aim higher. That's right. <laughs> but uh, thank Just you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, the Red Deer District Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we've been working a lot with since uh, the resurgence of this podcast. Uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about what's going on because you're are you about two years there now as the CEO? Yeah, two and a half. I think I started. They uh, they hired me. So yeah, uh, it's been great to be honest. We've had a lot of you know learned a lot. It's a really cool organization that does a lot of great things in the community and um, has got a great history. We have got a great team of staff that it will get to work with. So it's been a lot of fun to learn and you know try to be a, an impact organization in the community and and uh, have a little fun too. And maybe talk a little bit more about yourself first. I think most people who've been in Red Deer for a while know who you are because you have uh, deep roots here. I know you were uh, Dustin. You would have worked with at Hockey Alberta. You were there yeah. for quite a while. I think we determined tonight. I started the Monday after your last date when you left uh, the Hockey oh, Alberta. Time. I heard you were coming. Yeah, so yeah, I said, yeah it was great out. timing. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, I still had your old phone and I didn't know how to change the voicemail. So people got your voicemail for like so three years still. A lot of pissed off, <laughs> <laughs> of pissed off hockey parents. Then. <laughs> but, uh, and now too, uh, it's crazy that this was already five years ago, but you were a part of a huge legacy here in Red Deer, uh, basically heading up the Canada 
Winter Games in 2019. Uh, how was that experience? Like I said, uh, five years later, it's going to feel pretty good to still have that legacy going. Well, it was amazing. It was part of the bid process, which was really cool to get the games, which was really exciting. And um, and then once we got the games, I got a chance to go to Prince George to see the, the games before in 2015. And that's when I kind of thought, man, this would be pretty cool to be a part of. I didn't think about being the CEO or anything. I just thought of being a part of it in some way, like, uh, you know, on the board or something. And then uh, as I went through the the experience there, we uh, I just said, you know, I could do this kind of thing. And um, so we got the games, the bid, and then, you know, I applied for the job and, and I got it. And uh, it's a really cool experience, but it's a very bizarre experience too, because you start out, you're the first employee, you're the only guy in the office when you show up and then you scale up over four years and then there's 68 staff <laughs> working for the organization and you barely get to know some of the people that join you towards the end. And then uh, the games happen for two weeks and then all of a sudden <laughs> you're the last employee <laughs> and uh, you know, and then, it, then it's over. Um, so that from that perspective, it, it's a little bit bizarre, but what a, what a great ride and a fantastic fantastic experience and and working with so many volunteers and great people. Uh, you know, even just the Olympics here in, in Paris, I think we had two or three of our staff that were here at the games here were working for wow. the Paris Olympics. Oh, nice. So it is a bit of an industry, you know, it's mm-hmm. a bit of a, uh, for a lot of people that love to do that. So we met some great people, great legacies, still see those Winnie the Pooh jackets at the dog park. <laughs> I, was just, yeah. I see them all the time. Yeah. So, so they, they, uh, those are, that's pretty cool too. So uh, yeah, great experience and I uh, would never uh, not do it. You so. mentioned the uh, the bidding process is pretty cool. Uh, what do you think clinched it for Red Deer? Like, like- well, that, I think it was pretty easy. I think you know we when we we were up against Lethbridge, who had done a really good job in their bid, and I remember watching when they did the the, the reveal of who was going to get the games. They get to show you the the video of the other yeah. communities, you know, preparations and what they did. And I remember watching their video their video of what they did first, and I remember going, "Holy sh." Like we could lose this. These guys did an amazing job. Yeah. But what did it for us was uh, we had 10,000 people downtown Red Deer in August, all dressed in red. And it was amazing. Nice. And I think when they saw the community engagement that we had and um, all credit to Val Jensen, who really put that event on, if you know Val, a lot of the community does. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing experience and uh, they were blown away by our community engagement. And I think that's, you know, certainly clinched it in the end for sure. Well, they definitely came through during the games too. I know the weather wasn't wasn't it ideal. Was, it was cold. It was, <laughs> it was chilly. Was, yeah, but I think the turnout was still fantastic for, for most, if not yeah. all, the events. Coldest two weeks in Red Deer's history. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what we were told. Oh my yeah. goodness! I believe it. Yeah, it's a good cool. thing they built that outdoor speed skating. Yeah, I hate all those <laughs> well, the, the funny that was still cool, but it was oh, it was cold. The funniest thing is, of course, you plan for these contingencies, things that could happen. And when we were in Prince George, it was twelve degrees, and their speed skating, they actually had to move from. Yeah. Prince George up to St. John's to an indoor venue because it was too warm. Well, we were the complete opposite. It was completely, so we didn't really plan for too cold, but anyway. So, yeah, no, it was great. It was awesome. But now you're you're with the chamber and the kind of new challenge, I'm assuming looking to build a new legacy, which right now I feel like is helping bring this podcast back, which is something I think you want off your record. Uh, But let's talk a little bit about that because people- No, no, no. He wants it on. It's his dream, man. It's it's his dream. Is this, yeah, everything led to this, but uh, no, it was uh, like right after it ended, it pretty much. I know you you met with us and uh, I was just, I was burnt out, but uh, you know, you brought forward some ideas and, and basically said, Hey, like when you guys want to get going again, let's work together more. And then basically way down the road, uh, not only did we get the started again, but uh, you have Lund employed basically as, as part of your legacy with the chamber. So <laughs> Lund unemployed. Yeah. 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 yeah one yeah. day we'll change the title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know what? Uh, to be honest, the pandemic, obviously you guys got started. I heard about it. I watched watched it and I thought it was hilarious and awesome. You guys are having so much fun. And then I realized at some point, you know, we our job as the chamber is to help businesses market themselves and network and connect and, and be a part of something. And we, you know, we don't have a lot of natural media vehicles anymore. We don't have television here. We don't have that kind of stuff, you know, and rightly so things have changed. So when I saw it, and then when I heard you guys were closed down, I said, no, like you've got it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe you only had whatever the number of audience was, but it still was something and you had a brand and people were talking talking about it. And I thought, geez, you know, we have to try and, and bring these two things together, give you guys a, a, an opportunity to tell some stories of the business community. And, uh, and we, you know, we needed to, to make that happen. So I was excited to even then and excited that you guys are willing to try some stuff with us. And, you know, I'm still sure we're learning, but I think we're getting some good response on some of that. So, yeah, yeah I think it's been a, a fantastic fit. Obviously we, we have a lot of business owners or business leaders on our podcast. So to be able to, 
but go to their business, see what they do, learn about them and give them a vehicle to share their business with the community. I think it's, I think it's a win-win for everyone involved. Yeah, no, it's, it's in the, you know, the response has been great. And um, even the spotlight, you know, the videos that we're doing, you know, are getting good response and yeah. And I hope we can build on it. I mean, to me, it's a starting start line. It's not a finish line. So well, we'll see what ideas you have for the new year. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. Cause, Cause Lundy's got some ideas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good to hear. Flush them all awesome. out. You will get one good one out of yeah, it. For sure. well, hey, one good one's all you need, yeah. right? Batting average isn't good, but when it's a home run, it's a, it's a home run. That's all that matters, right? Wow. No, my batting average is pretty good. You guys just, you guys have a high bar to clear. <laughs> small strike zone. Yeah, yeah. small yeah. strike zone. Was that Angel Hernandez behind the plate? <laughs> But I guess I was talking about the chamber. So I know when you hear chamber of commerce, you kind of think, uh, you know, for anyone who, who what listens, do you think actually? Well, you, uh, the first thing is when I was younger, I honestly thought it's just people like going for lunch. Everyone's in a suit and tie, right. yeah. talking about business, and at, at least try for the Red Deer and District Chamber of Commerce. So pretty far from that, and I know especially since you've come on board, really trying to do a lot of different things and make it just more of like a fun community thing to be a part of. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We uh, we did our brand this year, and and the, and the rationale behind that was was we need to change a little bit of the narrative of what a chamber is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think chambers are kind of known as that, you know, some people have said to us, not everybody, of course, but, you know, that kind of old white guy, stodgy business thing. Now, we have been around for 130 years, so we would be very old and we pretty stodgy, I think would be natural. But I think I think we wanted to try and change the image a little bit, you know, as something a little more dynamic, a little more leading edge and an organization that is paying attention to the future as well as the present, you know, and that's why we we decided to make uh, some changes we did so there's that side of it but I think uh, you know the chamber is really about creating a place for business to to network to connect to be a part of something our job is to help provide them services or benefits that maybe they couldn't get on their own as especially small businesses yeah. and about 85 percent of our members are small businesses you know kind of under 10 employees education um, big component sure of it edu- too, yeah right? education and and policy you know we we spend a lot of time advocating for the business community uh, whether it be a locally at the municipal level or provincial or federal. And and I think that cha- our chamber's history has actually always been pretty good at that. To be honest, I think that's probably one of the things we've been pretty well known for. But I, I think in being great, uh, and we've had great events. You know, we've got a fantastic events manager and Shelly been around for a long time and done a really good job. And, uh, but we want to do new things too. And we want to challenge ourselves and, you know, hence the podcast and the partnership with you guys. So I think it's it's about uh, trying to find ways to do things a little different and, uh, and challenge ourselves to help the business community as best we can. And I know we probably do have a lot of listeners who uh, a lot of people in the business community probably are members. For those who aren't or maybe thinking about it, maybe just describe a little bit about what is the membership, what comes with it as well. Well, it depends. We, we, we scale our membership based on the size of your business. So if you're really small, if you're a consultant, a one person business, you know, you, you can start out at, you know, around $200 to be a member for a year and then it scales up based on your size. Um, you know, we offer services like benefits plans for for small business. We have a, we, we own our own benefits benefits plan chambers across the country hmm. it's called chambers plan so you know it's a it's a very affordable uh, flexible uh, benefits plan for small business and so that's one you know product if you will that we have to offer but we also offer some marketing services we offer some other third party discount benefits so if you're you know if you're a member you get some discounts on various services and and uh, things that would be helpful to your business uh, as I mentioned we make lots of network events and that's the number one reason why member why businesses join is networking mm-hmm. and so whether be our chamber chase which is our version of the amazing race which you guys were part of last year uh yeah, or, we didn't do well no you guys stunk but that's okay no, we, I mean, we got we got yelled at at pretty much every stop too, yeah so. every stop yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you know or we do uh you know we do our business after hours we do uh what's brewing coffee events once a month and those things have uh you know turned into really engaging and, and valuable opportunities for people to connect and meet new people in, in the business committee and, and all that kind of stuff and of course we do our business of the year awards which is probably one of our biggest most profile events we do every year to really celebrate the great businesses that we have in, in Red Deer and Central Alberta. So uh, so just an example of the networking. So um, at the start of the summer, we had the Chamber Barbecue downtown there. Um, and I just, I went down for a burger and I was sitting at this table with, you know, some random people and you just get chatting. And so that morning at work, I'd been planning an event with our marketing guy. And he's like, yeah, we got to rent some tables and chairs or whatever. So then I go to the barbecue and I happen to talk to this lady who owns a local event rental place. It's called Copper Cloud Event Rentals. 
and we get chatting about her business and she says, yeah, I'm the only locally owned one left. Like all the rest have kind of sold the bigger players and stuff like that. And on my way back to the office, I thought, well, why wouldn't we just rent from her? Like I'd rather rent from, from her than, yeah. you know, kind of a big faceless corporation. So um, sure enough, we were able to go through that. She was actually cheaper, got great service. Like there now we're going to yeah. use her moving forward. And actually, so she, that, that's kind of the power of yeah, the event. And I, they're hosting, or they were actually one of our stops in our chamber chase. Uh, and you had to t- do a table setting for like a major <laughs> event. And you, had to, <laughs> and you had to remember how to, where everything went uh, based on a picture. Oh, yeah. We God. took us like a while seven to do forks it. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. That's so that cool. was kind of cool. Yeah. But we, uh, we, uh, they're hosting our, uh, what's brewing uh, on October 4th, actually uh, Friday morning. So oh, this, I actually, this podcast might actually get out before October. That would 4th be good. Then it would be relevant that yeah. date. <laughs> but it'll for sure get out though before October 23rd, which yes. as you mentioned, the business of the year awards and uh, yeah, probably the the biggest event of the year, but uh, maybe just uh, for anyone who hasn't been thinking about going, maybe talk a little bit about that and uh, the terrible uh, interviewers that you might bring right. back again this yeah. year. Well, you know, of course we have, uh, I, I can't think we had over 70 nominations for five different categories. We, we take those nominations we have a, a, a very you know independent committee of, of evaluators of, of the nominations we receive. They pair those down to three per category. So that's 15 businesses and, and those 15 businesses plus everybody else is invited to come to our Business of the Year Awards, which we hold at RDP at the Arts Centre. And uh, it's an exciting night. We have a great reception before a networking event for about an hour and a half. Fantastic food, entertainment, uh, some really cool featured drinks and stuff like that. We've got an unbelievable sponsor in in uh, Service Credit Union uh, who really, really takes to this event and, and does some uh, cool activations at the event that they're really excited about. So that's uh, that's the, the start of the event. And then, of course, we go into the auditorium and we do the award. It's just like a, you know, just like a, uh, a Golden Globes or whatever awards night. And uh, and, we, and yeah, we got you guys involved last year in, in terms of interviewing our award winners as they came off the stage, which was awesome. I think it was a, it was a live feed and it, it uh, had a real cool feel to it. And a couple very, vasectomy jokes, which the, every award win. show needs. Yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> wanted them to win, but yeah, they, they got cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so so of course uh, this year another great list of uh, nominees in in our in our categories. Don't tell me to recite them all because I'll miss a few. But but some great businesses and uh, it's a fun night. And then after, of course, we have continue on the night with reception and dessert and all that kind of stuff. And and uh, it's a real fun time. Yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, I've been a couple times and it's, uh, it's a fantastic spread. Yeah, got, we've got free drinks for the for the hour hour and a half show up with your pants one size too big (laughs) yeah for sure yeah (laughs) yeah and then uh yeah you get to cheer on cheer on some businesses and chances are you probably know somebody that's nominated um and even if you don't it's it's still nice just to see how happy they are just to be nominated not only to win but there's some pretty emotional emotional winners and fair enough they've they poured their blood sweat and tears into their business and they're really proud of it so why not why not get uh, awarded for that so it's something that read your needs and hope it continues on for for many years to come yeah huge it is a huge networking night too i think whether if you're nominated or you just want to go um and for businesses too or thinking about becoming members that are listening right now or are members too is whether you nominate you can nominate yourself right like doesn't like for a business of the year award or people can nominate you doesn't, you don't even need to be a member really actually oh you don't okay yeah. so and that's yeah. that's huge too because i think the businesses uh that lund and i have even learned about the last two years being a part of it uh, the, the networking has been huge like we had johnson spring and trailer yeah. who we then have to have done some stuff with uh, like Shazma and Jamil uh, with ZS Holdings and all that. So yeah, you learn about all these new businesses. I believe at Copper Cloud Events mm-hmm. is one of the the nominated ones as well. So it is it is just a fun night and yeah, if, especially if we're there, at least one Absolutely. cheap laugh or two. It's Absolutely. probably at our expense, but it might be with us. Yeah. Who knows? And this year's our you know our 130th anniversary mm-hmm. as the chamber. So we're going to do some special things around that. So it'll have certainly a, a his, history theme a little bit. And uh, yeah, we're excited about you know bringing that to, to everybody making it it's a, it's really an entertaining night it's not mm-hmm. just standing there listening to boring awards it's we, yeah. you know we mix it up with mm-hmm. some good stuff including you guys so <laughs> well you mix off. it up with some stuff <laughs> let's not let's not say good but we'll we'll, uh, we'll mix it in there it kept both kevin's you coming this year or tbd well, well he's coming both of sure. you yeah. love live performing he's on the board so, he better yeah. be coming yeah. so See, i'll be there <laughs> you know what that's a good point though and, and walsh has been pretty quiet and i think it's maybe because he's on the board and he doesn't want to say the wrong <laughs> thing but you talk 
talked again about uh, earlier that you think just a chamber of commerce, you think just a bunch of old white guys, honestly, but the board, especially this year, I think, I don't know, or the current or the last president, like it's pretty young as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's a good, good mix, right? Pretty on the young. board yeah. that is representing all of these businesses from uh, like different types of people from different types of businesses. Yeah. I've been on the board just about a year now. Um, I got asked to join last year and I hadn't really thought about it before, but I, I thought, okay, well, I've always believed a really strong biz- uh, business community helps a strong community overall. And so that's kind of why I got involved. Um, and it's been a really good learning experience for me. I had ideas of what the chamber was, um, but I didn't know to the extent of everything that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, so that's been really cool just to learn about and all the stuff that Scott and his team do. And it's it really is looking out for the best interests of Red Deer as a whole, which is good that we have someone advocating for us, you know, on those provincial and federal levels and, and with the city. Right. Um, We had a board meeting today um, and a lot of talk was just about different stuff that is going on with the city that we're involved with and how we're trying to move things forward and progress and innovate as a community um, and just become that much stronger. So, yeah, lots going on. um, And I think we can touch on a few things. But, yeah, it was very eye opening. It's more than just, you know, here's some benefits and here's some like free info. And, you know, that's kind of all it is. There's there's much more that goes on. So So one of the one of the things that, you know, where I mentioned earlier, we we do policy, what they call policy worker working on on behalf of the business community to influence government to make the right decisions around policy and and regulations and all that stuff. And our chamber, a lot of people don't know, is that the uh, our chamber was was instrumental uh, in the mid two thousands. The federal government, the elimination of the Canadian Wheat Board, was started as an idea in Red Deer at mm-hmm. our chamber, and it became a national policy position of the Conservative government. And when they were elected, oh, wow. they made that happen. And that we actually have a certificate, a letter from the the government giving us recognition for where that mm-hmm. idea came from. So it's an example of how a very grassroots thing can turn into a national policy or a provincial level policy, or or you know or or some changes or, or some some support for something happening on a local level, you know, which is of course which more touches our business businesses here in Red Deer. But uh, so yeah, there that it's the, the chamber. You know, I don't know how many chambers are in Canada. I think three thousand or thirty five hundred. There's a lot, <laughs> and um, it's a lot like hockey Alberta, like minor hockey associations across the country, right? So it's a big network, and the network is quite well organized and strong. And so when the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and all its members decide that something needs to be done differently they have a lot of weight to throw at these things and and that's a big part of being a part of that network do you guys ever meet with other other chambers like across across alberta just yeah, to share do. ideas and yeah. yeah we have a couple of different ways where there's there's events that the alberta chamber of commerce hosts okay yeah um you know every year that we part of we just hosted the alberta chamber of commerce's agm here in red deer in may so we do get to know the other chambers. I, I keep saying, and I, I'm, I'm smiling and laughing at Ted because he worked with Hockey Alberta, you know, as uh, as of you. And it's a lot like the hockey network, really. I, I laughed when my first annual meeting that I went to, I said, oh my God, this is like 1998. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, but you have the the big centers, Empton, Calgary, kind of do their own thing and don't pay attention to everybody else. Yeah. It's very similar. <laughs> and then all the second cities like us, St. Albert, Grand Prairie, Lethbridge, we all work quite closely together because we're about the same size. We have the same, you know, relative issues and then some of the medium sized ones we work with as well and then those very small ones often need that support from the Alberta Chamber of Commerce directly because mm-hmm. they're so small they either part time staff or even no staff and you know, they might be volunteer or whatever so it just depends but it is a, it is a great people so can businesses join the Alberta Chamber of Commerce? Sure. Then? They actually become part of the Alberta Chamber through us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're actually, all our members are Alberta Chamber of Commerce. Oh, congratulations. Members. Just learned. Yeah. Yeah. We're an Alberta <laughs> Chamber <laughs> member. Perfect. Yeah. Didn't know that. No, I was just wondering if there was a benefit to joining the Alberta versus your, your local chamber, but I guess that, that, that happens answers the at co- the same time. Yeah. It's similar. Yeah. So you're, you pay a fee to us that part of that fee goes to the Alberta Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. It's like a minor hockey, hockey Alberta, hockey Canada. Same yeah, thing. The same thing. Know. Yeah. Same to say, there's more swag in hockey. Is there? Yeah. 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 I don't know why that is, but <laughs> maybe that's something you guys can change. Well, we can. Yeah. Like, I'm wearing the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Culture. I actually have some stuff for you guys. Too. I know. We'll, I was going to we'll say there's some. All right. Yeah. You didn't. You. I mean, you didn't sell it very well just now, but uh, we'll. we'll <laughs> oh, <sell> I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait till you see it. <laughs> it sells itself. Yeah. Well, there um, we go. You've talked a lot about you know the history and how this is your. 130th year. I'm curious what you knew about the chamber coming into this role and if there's something that you learned and 
that maybe you had no idea coming into, you know, running a chamber of commerce. You know what? I'll be honest. I did not know a ton. I knew kind of what a chamber did. I mean, I've been to a chamber events when I was here working for Hockey Alberta, working for the games. I was, you know, Hockey Alberta was always a member of the chamber here. And so was the games. And so we got to know through events a little bit, knew some of the people. But to be honest, didn't really know a lot about some of the things that they did and how how deep of uh, how much work we do around the business community. So, so that part's been new. But when it comes to the history, and I love history. I had no idea that it was as old as it is and how far and, and how cool our early history is of this chamber. It's pretty amazing. I mean, our first president was Raymond Gates. So Leonard Gates' eldest son was the first president of the chamber. The first city council. So we were formed bef- 13 years before Red Deer became an actual huh. community and the chamber was involved in forming the city or lobbying to get it be- to become a village, I believe is what it was. And the first city council was basically all Chamber, chamber board members. members. So, you know, like that tie back to the early days. And then, and then of course, as years roll on, there was ebbs and flows of the chamber. We used to have, there's a great photo of the chamber office with the fire hall and city hall all in the same <laughs> building. Of course, you know, there was, everything was much smaller back then. But, but I think, you know, uh, and then when you look through the history and, and I have to give credit to uh, the Red Deer Museum, who did a fantastic exhibit mm-hmm. on our history uh, over the summer. And then uh, also the Red Deer Archives, they've got great history, including, which I think is one of the coolest pieces of history, is we have the original minute book from the first meeting, the first t- 15 years of the chamber, we have the minute book. In those days, you literally wrote out what happened at that meeting. Yeah. And that book was was uh, held or kept by Carrie Wood. Mm-hmm. So, Carrie Wood Nature Center, Carrie Wood, hang on to that. And he eventually donated it to the archives in the 1950s. But, but that book is is a pretty cool piece of history. Red Deer's history it goes back that far. And it has the initial, you know, what they talked about. Although it's really hard to read. They, they were not good. I, I remember we saw one of those old documents that we saw this summer and it was... It was something talking about like here's the current issues yeah and it was exact same as today like they were worried about yeah. economy and they worried about wages and like yeah. all this social stuff media and it, and it was yeah. From, like, <laughs> yeah and it was from like what the the 40s or the 50s yeah, yeah. like it was it was kind of comical to hear that and so oh, well and, same, and same old and people would ask like media or whatever would ask you know what's changed well to be honest not a whole lot and to your point in the 60s what was one of the what has been one of the biggest issues in red deer this past summer like late spring summer what was one of the biggest what was the big change they made downtown uh i didn't know there'd be a quiz (laughs) parking oh yeah the part yeah parking was an issue back in the 50s and 60s why because they started paid parking and everybody said well no one's coming downtown and so parking was an issue (laughs) That you would have, yeah, that 70 would have years ago. to net, like have free parking and then you start charging. Yeah, that would have been rough. When, when, uh, when the first mall opened, guess what the issue was? Downtown is hollowing out. No one wants to go downtown. Downtown revitalization, right? It hasn't, it hasn't how many, changed. How many different times so, have we done downtown revitalization? Well, exactly. Yeah. So it's now on one hand, you could say that's kind of depressing because it never, but I think what, what. It's not getting worse. Yeah, that's no. That's good, yeah. But I think, I think the reality, what that says is that um, in every generation, you know, there are challenging issues that are hard to solve and uh you know the chamber has always been involved in trying to be a part of initiatives that have tried to make it better and yeah i was I, I think always trying to innovate yeah right i mean we paid for the first snow plow in red deer <laughs> uh, oh don't get us started on plow <laughs> <laughs> so we were a part of like road clearing that was you know we we started that yeah um, back okay. in the Apparently, I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, lots that, again, just every day a Red Deer people don't know about the chamber. And I only know this because we talk about it in, in the news a lot. And it was in the news this morning. Now, forgive me because I tune out when Matt's reading the news. I'm trying to get psyched up for my weather report. But uh, <laughs> psyched up. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got to deliver the weather. I only get 30 chances every day to say the weather. So I got to do it right. But uh, the, the one big thing right now that the chamber's involved in, right, is uh, I believe it's like a task force looking into to homeless in Red Deer, I could have got that completely wrong. But if you maybe elaborate on that, because that's, again, something people probably don't know uh, that the chamber is involved with. That's uh, pretty big for our community. Yeah. Last year, uh, March of 23, we made the decision to to put our hand up and say, you know what, we got to try and do something better than what's happening. Not just better for our community and our businesses downtown, which is obviously a driving force behind our initiative, but it was also the citizens themselves that are homeless. I mean, it's just, it's disheartening. And we thought we need to figure out what's going on and how can the business community be more involved? That was really our early premise of why let's get involved. And so we, we struck a task force that really was designed to go around and meet with everybody and learn about what's going on, learn about who does 
what, learn about what's working, what isn't working, learning about the people that have, that unfortunately are homeless, talk to some of them about what their experience has been. And uh, we spent uh, about 12, you know, almost a year reviewing that. We toured facilities here. We toured Edmonton and Calgary facilities and we learned an absolute, you know, a ton. And um, I think what we came away, you know, first of all, it's a very complex issue. If You know, it's, it's not as simple as just do this or that. It's very complex. And the other thing we learned is there's a tremendous people working on the ground trying to help people, people that have incredible passion and drive and just empathy and uh, are really amazing people at what they do. But we also learned there's some real gaps and some issues with the way the whole system is organized. And um, and so uh, from that, we, we you know, determined that there's some things that can be done to make this a better situation. And fundamentally, one of the things we realize is that the community has got to take more ownership on what's going on in this. It can't be a city of Red Deer uh, led initiative by itself. The community has to play a bigger role and including the business community. And um, and so our number one recommendation out of the work that we did was the formation of a homelessness uh, foundation that will oversee homelessness, that will take the lead on a strategic long-term picture point of view that's not subject to cycles and pol- political interference that is really focused on data and, and making partnerships and bringing people together to solve issues. And it works in Calgary. It works in Edmonton. They both have foundations that oversee theirs. And uh, we believe Red Deer is ready for that. And uh, we want to be a leader in Alberta and in the country, to be honest. And there are success stories around the country. And I think we, we feel that that's important. Now, the chamber itself is, this is not our space to lead in. We're the catalyst to get this going. And um, right now, the, the recommendation is starting, they're working towards forming this foundation. We've got a committee of people doing that. And once that gets up and running, then we'll kind of fade to the background. And we've kind of done our job. And if you look at the history of the chamber over time, that's what we do. You know, we're here to be a catalyst for change and look for better opportunities, better ways to do things. And long way to go, lots of work to do. Um, and again, can't say enough about the people, including the city of Red Deer, who's done some great work and has some, has got a lot of credit and, and, and we can learn a lot from them in terms of what we can do. So uh, we can be better and we can help our citizens better. And that's what we hope uh, this initiative will, will bring over time. So. Yeah, and obviously that one, like uh, always a hot button issue in Red Deer, maybe sometimes a, a little hard to talk about. And like you said, it's, it takes everyone. It's like any major issue takes everyone. But I think it goes to show too, just how important having a strong business community Absolutely. is, right? Because yeah. it's more than just supporting other businesses in that. I know you personally, I think I run into you at almost every community event that I'm at and you're probably at way more. So if you don't recognize Scott's voice, you probably would recognize his face because he's at uh, every event except for Walk a Mile today. <laughs> we, we missed you, but I know, I, know. I think those knees of uh, those feet have been in enough high heels. Yeah, I've done it. That, that we it. know of. Who yeah. knows what I have, like, It's yeah. a great event. And I uh, I, I love the uh, Yale Reach Center. That's a great event. I didn't make it this year. I did it last couple of years. Hey, hey we had a board meeting today. Yeah. 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 We were busy. Hey, but yeah. you also taught us about like taping the shoes to yeah. our feet. With it, I learned that from somebody else. That was yeah. a game saver. Game changer for sure. Yeah. But now, obviously, that's what you as a person and as a chamber too try to push out is getting all these businesses to involved involved in a lot of community events because that's kind of, it's kind of the give and take, right? Of the business community. We've got a phenomenal, I mean, you, you know, we've said this before, um, you know, many times, uh, you know, we, uh, there's lots of groups say we've got great organizations that run fantastic events, whether United Way, we're after luncheon uh, this week or whatever it is, there's lots of different uh, organizations and they do great work and the business community supports them all. And, you know, we saw that when we had the Canada Games, we had tremendous support. And I think our community is, you know, should be very proud of, of that. And I don't think that's going to change um, anytime. And our, if anything, our job is just to, to help enable those businesses to be healthy and strong so that they can give back uh, to the community as much as possible. Right. So, yeah, one, one thing I do want to mention too is, and Lund can elaborate on this, but you guys are all, you're not just like getting these businesses involved. As a chamber, you're involved a lot. And I thought to see that uh, you guys as a group put a team in when uh, the gutter, like Lund and Dustin, started this oh, corporate yeah. league. So you're not only like helping facilitate that, but you're also all down there with all the businesses and, and stuff, which I, I think is pretty cool. So it is a, a, obviously a, a practice what you preach model there. Yeah. And that's a, that's a fun activity. I can't believe that. Support. Bowling is fun. Well, just bowling being is down fun. there is fun. Yeah. But just being down there is fun. But drinking. that's been a, <laughs> pizza, that's yeah. pizza and, and uh, yeah, no, I mean, we've enjoyed that and um, it seems endless though. Uh, I'm not sure where we are in the process, whether there's <laughs> yeah. playoffs. All I know is we just keep going when we're absolutely in the middle of the pack. Like, It'll be 130 years. Okay. Probably, yeah. because, uh, <laughs> playoffs start in November. So you got oh, November. Okay. You got two months I, to get I, your game. I shape. think I'm not, a, yeah, we definitely got some work to do yeah. on that front. So, yeah. 
up. Not a lot of strikes over here, but <laughs> strike outs. Hey, Scott, I know you brought gifts, but we're going to beat you to the punch. And uh, no matter what, like whatever you give us is going to be a hundred times better than this. But I know this is probably part of your dream. The only reason why you wanted to be on the podcast. And it's amazing that we still have any of these left. Well, it's not amazing because no one wants them. But uh, as all our guests do, you get this uh, one <laughs> one in 600. <laughs> oh, dear. Firefighter wow. calendar. Yeah, that's definitely uh, framed and going. Somewhere. And I know you're yeah. looking at me in London. And that's that's our real book. Body, no Photoshop, <laughs> no airbrushing. Yeah, we don't believe Nothing. in any of that cosmetic If there's stuff. airbrushing, I'd be concerned <laughs> yeah. about the quality of the and, work. And I know what you're but. thinking, that that is a sock. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, guys. I thought it was going to be a calendar. Other than individual oh, we, didn't, photos, we did not but, make the calendar. But uh, that's <laughs> awesome. I look forward to it. Well, I'm, yeah, I do have something for you guys. In, in celebration of our, our 130 years, we got some swag. You got oh, it. All right. It's a very nice looking box. Oh my, this is it's heavy. All right. There's a, a few things in there, but uh, hopefully oh, you'll is... use them proudly and showcase them in the, in the, in the oh, perfect. places that you do it's use the tools. a lot of coffee. Yeah. It, you know, it's, you yeah. don't have to have, you can fill it with whatever you want. Yeah. It's, oh, yes. I've been, I've been looking for a new notebook to write my ideas <laughs> down in. So this is perfect. But thanks a lot for everything you guys do. And, and then uh, there's coffee in there and that comes from City Roast. City Roast oh, Coffee wow. is one yeah. of our members. Actually, we had a little competition this summer uh it was uh show us your mug shot right yeah and uh we had just hundreds of businesses you know they came to our office got the mugs they had some just the coolest photos of where they had staged these mugs and whatever and then we of course we we uh did that social media thing and then we had draw drew a uh winner and it turned out to be mcg careers and uh what we decided to do because we said it would be a 500 dollars coffee party or something mm -hmm. and instead we went around to all the businesses that are uh members uh, that, that sell coffee as part of what they do. And we bought gift certificates and they're going to go and do a tour of all these oh, places. And, oh, nice. and uh, so again, a way to get back to those businesses, but a way to showcase uh, some of the great, uh, great spots in Red Deer. So oh, thanks a lot awesome. for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. And I guess this is all the new branding too, right? We it didn't, is, didn't yeah. really talk, but with really quick, I guess we could talk about with the 130th uh, birthday is a rebranded. Is that something that was in the works for a while? Well, we started out probably a little bit simpler thinking that it was maybe time just to refresh what we done. I think we had about 10 or 12 years with the existing brand. And when we kind of got into, we did some focus groups and, and, and really what came out of it was, you know, people wanted us to kind of modernize what we were doing. And, and so we, we looked around and, and one of the things that was kind of interesting was, as we all know, red deer, you know, red, you know, red deer, everybody would expect it to be red, but the challenge is there's a lot of that. And the other challenge is that everybody used, tries to use a, the same deer head <laughs> as a, uh, as a symbol. And so we wanted to, to be a little more creative. And so, our, you know, obviously, our, the company William Joseph that did the work with us, they uh, came up with uh, some some pretty creative ways to to in incorporate the deer into the Red Deer. We shortened our name a bit from N District Chamber of Commerce to Red Deer District Chamber, and uh, and try to make uh, make it a little bit more memorable and and a little bit more standoutish and and uh, and a little more progressive. And that's kind of where we landed. But uh, yeah, we're really happy with it, and we're just uh, trying to get it out there now. So I especially like the name change. There's a lot of uh, blooper reel of me trying to say Red Deer and district chamber of commerce so right. uh, scott though we will uh, we won't keep you any longer but thank you so much again uh, for being here and we have to say we'll say it a million times uh, such a big thank you to you and everyone at the red deer district chamber that is way easier to say uh but uh for uh, working with us uh, really giving us a lot of means to not only bring the podcast back but to do things like lund employed and and kind of uh, take our content to the next level and it was great to have you on here and and shine a bit more of a light on what the the chamber is doing because uh, honestly I'm not even a business owner but I know you guys are, are doing a lot of great things so last thing I guess for anyone who wants to learn more maybe wants to, to join what's the best way to go about that just uh, give us a call at the office or visit our website and click on you know contact us or any of the information that we have on there or, or come by pop by the office I mean we're right on gates in 32nd you can't miss us right beside the service credit union and the co-op been there for a long time so people should know where we are hopefully but if you're new to town maybe you don't and uh, come and visit us and we'll, we'll help you out so but yeah. hey I want to thank you guys so much for doing what you do and uh, really promoting all the things you do in Red Deer. It's awesome. And uh, we're thankful to have the creativity that you guys have and the and the, the passion you have for for celebrating Red Deer. And, and so thank you. And we look forward to doing more stuff uh, with you guys. So yeah, That's why we had you on. We, we knew you would compliment us a yeah. bunch at the end. But seriously, Scott, thank you. And uh, you're welcome for uh, helping make your dreams come true. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot, Scott.
Now we're present. Oh, I mean, what a guy, hey? <laughs> <laughs> he said so many things I I kind of expected because I I kind of knew ahead of time what he <laughs> what he was what he said already. But no, he he does a fantastic job. Um, he wears so many different hats with the chamber, and he's he's grown it. I know I know. Growing up, I used to think of the the chamber as a stuffy, boring place that only old businessmen went to that had no impact on my life, no impact, no benefit for me going to to a chamber meeting, but. But now that I've joined it, it's I've been to a lot of meetings and it's uh, it's been very beneficial for for me personally and for the bowling alley. So, how many times did you think about the chamber growing up? <laughs> <laughs> More than the Roman Empire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, more in like your early twenties. Yeah, a lot more okay. like when you're first right. getting into it, like right when you're done. World. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right when you're done okay. school, the chamber used to be like a, like an intimidating place for someone young that's maybe just out of school or just starting their first job. But that's how you build those relationships. That's how you meet people. That's how you learn new ideas and and steal some good ideas too if they're All working. Right. So as a kid, Len probably thought it was like some medieval dungeon <laughs> or whatever. That's where they meet the chamber. <laughs> Like the torture chamber, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of torture, we got to keep this podcast rolling. Uh, no, huge thank you again to Scott Robinson from the Red Deer and District Chamber uh, for coming in. Like I said, a uh, really interesting guy. So many ties uh, to Red Deer. And uh, yeah, w- whether he wants this distinction or not, uh, one of the saviors of this podcast and a big reason why we're here uh, very mediocrely entertaining you right now. Uh, as always, we have more chamber things to chat about as well in our next segment. So uh, let's head into Shooting the Breeze. Bang, bang. You looked at Kevin so intently for that. I was, yeah, I was picturing shooting him. Yeah, that was- <laughs> Oh, it's because last it's because last time I he's, jumped in, he stole, I know. yeah, he stole. But don't you know two job interviews and sound effects? Always eye contact, never while eating a banana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. I've been See, doing that backwards you, this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why you can't get a job? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I don't like bananas. <laughs> Just not for me. I do this when I'm riding too. We got to get ready for the next thing. You got to wiggle it all. When you're riding a horse. Yes. <laughs> it's important to be loose. Well, okay. um, when you're riding a horse. <laughs> Huh. So, is sicko. So, so being loose, always when riding a horse. And eye contact. <laughs> Where does the banana fit in this? Okay, what? <laughs> Weird question. Yeah. Hey, that's a fair question. We're just trying to, we, know, we don't know anything about riding horses. <laughs> or show up one time without a banana like an idiot. Actually, I do have a friend whose horse loves bananas. Only if they're the right amount of ripe, though. Aaron, this whole time you're in the attery, can you just look Scott straight in the make eye contact with Scott? Like the whole time? No, because okay. I'm not weird. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Everyone just stared at Aaron. It's fine. No, I hate it already. I can feel it. <laughs> Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by Recovery Lab, home of Central Alberta's only cryo spa. Recovery Lab is dedicated to your health, wellness, and recovery, offering a wide variety of services, including physiotherapy and fascial stretch therapy. Head to myrecoverylab.ca to book your appointment today. I I sure could use a cryo spa for my calves after wearing those high heels. I I I know I did it wrong because I don't think you're supposed to have all the weight on the balls of your feet. No. That's how I felt safest. I also think there, because men and women have a different center of like balance, I think that it must be a little bit harder for men too. It I'll really helped that. if you just owned it and mm-hmm. like strut, no, strut. strutted it out yeah. Yeah. and yeah. held hands at the end. Like we, we all did. We yeah. learned yes. that on our last lap as yeah. we were coming through. Um, confidence is key. Yeah. Confidence is key. Mm-hmm. Lund had yeah. the best strut. I figured group, out I how to strut. Yeah. yeah. But your chest out, shoulders back. It helps you balance. Peacocking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 it is. So, so next year, team team cryo spa after we do walk, walk a mile, <laughs> I think, because that would would feel real nice. Uh, no, uh, lots to shoot the breeze about as always. I think the first thing just to mention uh, because uh, Scott, as he already said, now yeah. just so you know, I remember that one. Yeah, um, <laughs> we get this episode out right away. So, uh, really important to note a, a really fun event put on by our friends at, at Bows, a troubled monk, a whole bunch of groups that come together to form Spirit of Red Deer Oktoberfest back again. 
again this year. It's talked Saturday, October 5th, but not only is there Oktoberfest happening, they made a weekend out of it. Uh, comedian Jeremy Hotz is going to be performing the night before on October 4th. If you like me and grew up watching Just for Laughs on, on TV, on CBC all the time, he's a very like a deadpan kind of uh, comedian. So uh, uh, good for them to, for expanding that weekend. And I know uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be emceeing that again, uh, Lund. Different weekend this year, so it doesn't fall on your birthday. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. That was that was tough last year. I, it's nice not to have 18 birthdays in one yeah. year. I can, yeah. can tell and you I that right now. Star. I've still never seen anyone get booed in the middle of their <laughs> own happy birthday. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> that was a rough night for me. But, I, but I'll bounce back. I always do. But uh, yeah, go to spiritofreddeer.com to, to get your tickets for that. You can get like a weekend pass. You can just get tickets. Uh, you can get a table of eight. You can do like kind of a sponsored table. There's lots. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun as always. And uh, I think at some point, going to be a giveaway on our social media as well. Uh, hopefully it hasn't happened yet, but knowing me, uh, it probably hasn't. But I think as everyone, I think Strybosh, you're the only one who hasn't been to the Oktoberfest yet. No, I haven't. Well, I just, I, I don't know. I got to grow up i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a sweet hat yeah you do Ooh. and you yeah. get a sweet uh, stein. stein i still use the steins that griffin yeah. i have I oh, that's that's I yeah i know lund i know lund is hung over when one of the steins is out on the counter with just a full glass of water <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how you get yeah. it in yeah. yeah yeah less trips off the couch it's mm-hmm. that's smart hopefully we'll see you there and uh yeah kevin we'll we'll try and get you there this year i think you sold me the hat I mean, how do I say no to that? Oh, and and I'm in Lederhosen. Yes. I'm going to borrow Lund's sock. So, from the firefighter photo. Right. Yeah. 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 I still have that exact sock. (laughs) Based on the underwear you were wearing that day, I don't think you get a lot of new stuff. Yeah. You guys are just jealous. You guys are just so jealous. I actually found that photo the other day when we were cleaning, and now I keep it back on the fridge so our cleaning ladies know. I know you guys. Nice. Yeah. I just want, it's a picture of Kenzie with the Easter bunny and then you guys. (laughs) I'm glad we made the cut. That's all that's on my fridge. Good. Those two uh, pictures. Does your mom who does not have a nickname amongst us, does she still have all our photos? Yeah, she does. Slippery Susan loves them. (laughs) That was, like, I only have like four regrets in my life and calling your mom Slippery Susan is about three and a half of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I wrote some weird things on that (laughs) photo when when we signed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were part of the problem. Thank God. (laughs) Um, and one thing to talk talk about, wrap up a little bit, uh, you know, it'd be great if Dustin was here for this because I think he has the most to tell. But we did uh, survive another Chubbs tournament this year down in Calgary. Uh, Dustin moved up, what, 16 spots on the last day to finish second place. So uh, at least we don't have to hear him brag about that. Uh, no heartburn for you this year, I think, Lund. Or not, no crippling heartburn. No, yeah, no crippling heartburn. I had, uh, I, I came prepared this year. I had a fantastic time. The pool was excellent. Good water slide. Uh, dinners open till midnight too. That's yeah, yeah that was that, nice. That was big. Yeah. yeah, that was nice in the morning, and then after the golf round too, just to kind of wash off all your all your <laughs> yeah. shitty play Sins. and yeah, all your yeah. mistakes. If you're not Lund, it was a quick walk to Denny's. Yeah, it was it was a ten minute walk, and it took I, Lund a half hour to get there. I Google mapped it, but I was on the uh, not the walking directions, like the driving directions. <laughs> so you had to drive like out the wrong side of the parking lot, and then go down a block to hit the lights and do a U turn. And I didn't, and I walked that entire way until I until I did the until I did the U turn, and then I started walking back towards the casino, and I realized, all right, what's going on here? So yeah, half hour later, when it was, it was literally a five minute walk, but I made it and had a great yeah. dinner. Well, we were already in, and it was empty. It's like a, a truck stop Denny's, basically on Barlow Trail in, in South Calgary, and we were already eating, and we just saw Lund walk in. I thought. Oh my God, I hope he just came here by himself. I was just happy to get there, yeah. man, to be honest. I was just, I was just tired from my walk. But uh, yeah, no, I would I would go back to Calgary and Harp. You don't have to go far away for a trip. It just just depends who you're with, obviously. Yeah. Every year we have a great group of guys. Everyone's there just to have a good time. And then whoever can hold it together the best usually wins it. So congrats to uh, Darren Eklund this year. Who... Yeah, the first ever winner of the Chubbs. Yeah, now. Uh, now won year 11, so 10 yep. years apart. First ever repeat champion, too. And he's old, so it's more impressive. Yeah. Right? He's <laughs> 10 years older than he was when he first won. Yeah, I mean, we're all 10 years older now, yeah. but... Well, we haven't won. Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding yeah, me. Yeah, I was. I, I blew it pretty bad this year. I didn't want to win this year. I, I, I was having enough fun not to win, and I wanted, <laughs> I wanted some other guys that maybe weren't having as much fun as me. 
to although darren did have a lot of fun so mm. i was kind of hoping somebody else won the silver lining of that trip for me is we got to see a dude walking down the street of a small town with a parrot on his shoulder so oh, cool. it was very random yeah. yeah yeah oh and oh sorry i do have to mention that we learned what a silent line dance is cool. we went to ranchman's in calgary wow. and, this yeah. is what i wanted to comment on we went to ranchman's one night and we got there what like seven so it was a little early yeah they have different dance floors throughout the bar, but the one that we were sitting by eating, there was all these people of all ages and, and everything out there, like, I don't know, 20, 30 people. And they had headphones on, but the headphones were going blue and they were not dancing to the music that we could hear. They were dancing to their own music. And there was an instructor out there in the middle, but like no one was really watching them. It was very clear that all these people were there because it was Thursday night and this is the night you go and line Friday. dance or whatever Friday, night yeah. and ran at Ranchman's. Um, line dance lessons, yeah. And I know myself sitting there, I was actually thinking of the movie Wally. <laughs> <laughs> they they were all in people that could actually move and Wally, they're like too fat and they sit in the chairs and but like they all get they all get directed where to go in Wally. And that's just all I could think about was all these people dancing to their own beat right there in the middle. I don't know. It was a very weird experience. It was the first time I've seen that sort of thing and um, I didn't like it. That was actually my one regret is that I didn't try yeah, out I, the weird headphone line dancing. Yeah, no, you, it seems like you'd yeah. be up your yeah. alley. Kevin did. So we had like a spot up above where you could look down on the dance floor and the line dancing starts. And it's so when I went to Ranchman's like a lot in my early 20s, like probably at least two times a month. And there's the, the usual line dances. There's like four or five of them. Literally everything's a line dance now and it is ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we looked down and all of a sudden there's Strybosh just like bumbling around and we're like oh what an idiot and then 30 seconds later he's doing the whole dance like <laughs> memorized teaching other people how to do it <laughs> uh, Dustin too Dustin did do pretty pretty well at that but Kevin especially just down there by himself everyone else is up there usually it's like hey everyone let's go dance no he's just down there yeah good for him you know when you just find your element yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is your element that was my element yeah you should have put those headphones on yeah, yeah. on the actual dance floor <laughs> people you would confuse yeah. the crap out of everybody all right, now what do we talk about? I don't know, but do you ever think that maybe we were at Ranchman's at the same time? No, I, oh, I mean, weird. I do now. Yeah, like we probably yeah. were. You know, I'd have been there with my friends and yeah. just doing horse girl stuff. What? Uh, <laughs> what was, hold on. What's? Oh, we went like with like Spruce Meadows parties a lot, mm, like rider parties uh -oh. during the Masters and stuff. So it's just oh. a bunch of horse You're all the girls that didn't have time for people, non-horse right, people yeah. like me. Exactly. Lundy's like, tell me more about yeah. these horse girls. Yeah. yeah. What, what's horse girl stuff? Is it? <laughs> I mean, you mostly horses, just talk about horses a lot. These horse girls, is it the top half or the bottom half? Like a centaur type of thing. It's, it's important for Lund. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some of them. Yeah, he's, he's like, which, which, which half do I want? Lund, would you, what, oh, would you rather? Yeah, that's Actually, a tough Now, here's a the thing. Question. The top half is a horse. Obviously, that's, there's some important things there. That's but at the bottom, think of the money you'd save on gas if the bottom half is the horse. You could ride your wife all over town. <laughs> I think if I have to choose, I think I want, to, I think I go top half, <laughs> top half woman, bottom half horse. If I had it's to choose. top heavy. Yeah. But so are you want top half horse? No, no. Top oh, half woman. Okay. Oh, I thought you said top half horse. No. Oh. oh. No, huh. like a, like a, like a true centaur or <laughs> yeah. what do they call? Do, do they, what do they call a woman centaur? A centaur? Whatever yeah, I her think name so. is. Susan. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not Susan. <laughs> <laughs> just the I mean, she is a things. horse girl. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We just go hunting together. I could pull my <laughs> my bow and arrow, and my my wife horsewoman could <laughs> like I could ride her around, and we could get tonight's catch. I think the majority of people would want top half. I'd say almost 90% would want top half woman, bottom would, half would horse. Would you have arms? This is now important. Like, what's the top half? Because would you have human arms or like yeah. horse legs? No, no, no. It'd no. be human. It'd be t You'd women be, from yeah. the waist up. No, no. I'm talking about if the top half is horse. Oh. You'd have human arms, but I feel like you wouldn't have shoulders. You'd just have a neck. Yeah. Wait, if the top half is a horse, can they, can they, can they talk in English or are no. they going to just nay? This is your nay. fantasy. Huh? <laughs> well, now I'm thinking about I'm it. Envi I'm envisioning like <laughs> <laughs> top half, you've got arms, you've got shoulders, like human. Like yeah. And then you, and then you, but then you only have two horse legs. So you don't have oh. the full like centaur. Oh, you're right. Like, Cause there's six four. legs on us or two arms. That's right. You've got legs. six yeah. appendages instead of just oh. regular four. Uh, so no, I, well, I'm, I'm watching. <laughs> 
<laughs> young Hercules and Hercules and Xena has shown me it is a full horse body. <laughs> then where the neck would be is a human torso. Yeah, yeah but that's so a make going- <laughs> fairy tale land. <laughs> no, we- I'm sorry. In, in like I every- go by Xena rules yeah. for a lot of things in my life. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. So. This but, is WWXD. Okay. But if you look at a minotaur, which is a man body and a bull head, right. he has human arms. They're just hairy. Yeah, yeah but a minotaur is just crazy. You're not going to have a relationship with a minotaur. <laughs> I would. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah gonna, let's be a little more realistic here yeah. and with this. Centaurs. I know. Come on. I think there's books about it. Spicy books. And yeah, I'm sure there is. And so. you, you know what? I, like mermaids. I think I want top half woman, bottom half fish. <laughs> no, that tracks. That's a yeah. classic mermaid. Yeah. A fish with human legs is. <laughs> I'm just a top half. I'm a top half guy. <laughs> hey. One's in a personality. Yeah. 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 Sure. I'm glad we cleared that up. All right. Maybe All right. maybe we put that to a vote. <laughs> hey, oh, Ted, start a poll. There, yeah. Yeah. I, I hate this podcast <laughs> so fucking much. And that's why we wouldn't have been friends if yeah. we were going to ranch because, friends at the same time. We <laughs> too many human parts. Yeah. Yeah. That would be sick, though. There were like a cent- uh, like a centaur costume, two ranchmen. Though, yeah. think of all the hor- horse girls you'd get. That's <laughs> true. They're just over there eating hay. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> Damn. Next year. Oh. Where do I? <laughs> Wait, we can circle back to this. <laughs> Like I, well, I know. I think I started it too, but it's yeah. like it's just like physical pain right now. I now jump. Um, thankfully, a jumping back to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Scott, we're so sorry. Uh, the latest episode of London Employed is here, kind of. It's being worked on as we speak right now. But by the time this episode comes out, I'm putting the pressure on Riley here. The fifth installment of London Employed will be available to watch on our YouTube page. Uh, but we haven't seen the final product, Lund. We know it'll be good. Uh, uh, this time, you tried to gain employment with our friends at uh, Classic Cleaners. Uh, Jamin and Shanna had you there. And uh, uh, plenty of the world of dry cleaning. Definitely a lot of new learning opportunities there. It, it was kind of intense. It was. It's uh, like the only place I've seen, I think 99% of people will see is like the front little part of the shop where you go drop in your clothes. And then you go pick them up and they're magically clean. There's a whole production that goes on in the background that's that's very uh, detail oriented. They have some really cool machines. They have this really cool Iron Man machine that I got to use. And Is I that wanted... what it's called or did you just call it that? That's what I, I just, call I it. wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's actually called, but it blows out a shirt or a jacket, gets all the wrinkles out at high heat. Hopefully, hopefully my work will show up in the video because I got to do a little bit of everything. And they also uh, do laundry now. So if you don't want to do laundry at your house, if you have a family, if you're busy, you can, they can come pick up your laundry and then drop it off to you. Even if you're not busy and just hate laundry, that's the service they provide. And God, they were so busy throughout the entire yeah. day. It was We were there for probably five or six hours, but not because we were taking We were just waiting for a, a, anything we had to record in the front. We had to wait till there was like yeah, no custom. And they were like nonstop. Were, yeah. I thought it was just a busy day. And like, no, it's usually like this. So I, do you guys get a lot of stuff dry cleaning? Yeah, I, I, I've I, been going I personally to don't. I do. I moved to Red Deer too. And, and again, uh, uh, two people that we met and uh, mingled with at the Chamber Awards that we got to know a little more. And uh, again, just another group of people we thought, hey, they'd be great because they're always there at every community event. Um, you know what? They're a Black Knight tuxedo. Like anytime I MC anything, they basically donated me a, a tux to use for the night. So uh, great people there. And uh, I, I got to give a huge shout out to Jamin because I took a, an old shirt and I when I say I, I emptied the fridge anything that could make a stain I put a stain on this white t-shirt and he got it looking cleaner than when I started. I got it looking cleaner. I did the work. Wait, I have video proof. That I did, did some of the work. <laughs> he did it when you were doing other stuff so you wouldn't get in his way. I did some of the cleaning <laughs> on the shirt. I want some of the credit. <laughs> Because I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, it yeah. turned out pretty good. Yeah. And I mean, I think you did okay. Like, there's a lot to learn. There's some uh, some wrinkles for you to iron out, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but no, huge thank you to, to Jamin and Shanna of, at Classic Cleaners and everyone there too for... We were we were in the way a lot. Like it is tight quarters back there. But uh, of course, head to our YouTube page uh, for the full episode and you definitely will not be disappointed. Well, that's a guarantee. <laughs> well, that's a Lund guarantee, so... It's still a guarantee. <laughs>
Your money back. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just come see us at Oh Dear. We can yeah. guarantee anything we want. No one's listening after the half horse bullshit that <laughs> I we know. just talked about for like a half hour. I know. Why do you think I say half the shit I do say on <laughs> here? But that's because I have to edit it. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, that is yeah. that is part of it. And you can't hear half of it because Aaron's fucking coughing all I'm the time. I'm so sorry. I should see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're perfect just the way you are. Thank you. That's really nice. Mm-hmm. But this cough is not. And before I forget, you really want to watch this episode of London Employed because last episode at Red Heart, Aaron's baby, Kenzie, made made her a podcast debut, a special cameo appearance. This time, there's a cameo by the one and only Kelly Lund. Yeah, I don't want to ruin anything, but she she was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And Kelly, if you're listening to this right now, uh, make sure you go back to full speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to sound drunk. <laughs> yeah. I think, I th- you know what? That's a perfect time to tell that story. We're I haven't, off the I rails t- anyway. I don't think you've yet. told this story. No. I, I think you, I probably told you guys it yeah. Yeah, offline. But uh, <laughs> two or three episodes ago, it was some random day, she called me and she said, oh, I just listened to your podcast. Uh, you guys, it was great as always, but I think uh, I think you guys drank too much. <laughs> I was like, well, no, we didn't drink any more than we usually do. She goes, no, like everyone is slurring. Even your guest was slurring. And like, how many beers did you have? And I was trying to think back and I'm like, two maybe? She's like, no, you had way more than that. Every single person was slurring. So I was like, okay, that's weird. I, I had I hadn't listened to it yet, so oh, was, shocker. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, when I listen to it, I'll let you know if I see what you saw. Like three days later, she calls back in their vehicle. She goes, okay, I figured it out. She started playing it for her sister on the way up to Calgary, and like two minutes in, her sister realizes, oh, it's on uh, 0.75 speed. <laughs> so all of our sentences were really drawn out oh and really, really God. slow. And we did sound, you if do you, when you, if you do want a good out. laugh, listen to it at 0.75 speed because we do sound like slow. I mean, if, <laughs> if you if you really want a good laugh, listen to literally anything else but this podcast. Yeah, but yeah you're right. It is. So, so anyway, we, fi- we figured out we weren't drunk. It was just my mom didn't know her uh, phone or vehicle could do <laughs> Uh, half speed or quarter speed or one and a half speed so yeah lesson learned for everyone involved you know what i took from that kelly listens to every podcast all the way through yeah i think she does Uh, honestly good for her for sticking with it at 0.75 speed because that makes for a real long podcast yeah Yeah. we she's a real fan it was probably four hours for her yeah that's a good mom i didn't listen to the top bottom half horse stuff on (laughs) we would sound hammered at that conversation (laughs) We sounded some kind of way. Uh, okay. We uh, do want to, we just mentioned Red Heart and as always give them a shout out uh, because, uh, well, we still have uh, lots of old beer to be drinking here in studio. But not only that is uh, well, a couple of weeks ago now, their uh, latest, I guess, relaunch of their blonde lager. They, uh, a blonde ale, sorry. I know there's a difference. A blonde ale. Uh, they did old beer again, the labels, but it's actually available for purchase uh, right in their tap room. So oh, make nice. sure you go in and pick some up if you're looking for that. And uh, uh, places like Bose are carrying it now. Now, uh, cilantro and chive. Actually, I had one when I was there the other night and it felt so narcissistic, but it's like they're doing us a favor. I feel like I, of all people, should be should be buying one. But uh, hey, if you're ever at a place too, they carry uh, local beers uh, and maybe suggest it. Not for us. We, we don't care, but uh, just to get uh, Red Heart a little more business because it is, it is so cool that they did this for us. Yeah. I think we got exactly zero dollars back on whatever we sell, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's just a fun thing for us, uh, just uh, something cool, and uh, you know what? And they've been they've been great to us, and uh, yeah, kind of a, a cool collector can thing. And we only had so many, so uh, now you can can go out and buy it, support local, and uh, I do. I honestly, I like the look of the can. I think it's it's kind of fun. And that's a great beer. Yeah, it I like the, I do beer, like the yeah. beer. Yeah, it's the official beer of uh, whatever you need it to be. Red Heart, you can use that. <laughs> And next up, uh, I'd like to introduce someone very special, brand new mummy, and she's going to take a minute here to talk about it. Go ahead, Aaron, with your mummy minute. All right. You know what? Actually, because you're doing the segment. Oh. And you're gross and cough a lot. The Oh Dear Mommy Minute is brought to you by Hebe Beauty Bar, helping you become the most confident and vibrant version of yourself. With a team of dedicated medical aesthetic experts and a wide range of proven services and treatments, Hebe can help you work towards your beauty and anti-aging goals with pride. Book your next appointment today at hebebeautybar.ca. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, all right. I want to take a minute to talk about your pelvic floor health. 
Uh, about time someone had the guts to do it. Yeah. <laughs> because let me tell you, before I got pregnant, I never once peed myself when I coughed. Mm. However, after giving birth, it's important to take care of your pelvic floor health. And it is actually something that I think that more expecting mothers need to think about because it's something that you can and should do while you're pregnant. They actually recommend that you go in early in your second trimester. And generally, because this is physiotherapy, it would be covered by your benefits, which is also really great. I went six weeks postpartum for about six or eight weeks, and it was super helpful. They do a lot, not only with your pelvic floor, but looking to strengthen your body again postpartum. So it's a really great resource. But one regret I have is that I didn't go while I was pregnant. I thought, oh, well, I horseback ride. I must have great pelvic floor health. I've never accidentally peed myself. So things are great. But being pregnant itself puts a ton of pressure on your pelvic floor. And whether you are giving birth vaginally or you have a C-section, it's still really hard on your pelvic floor. So by going in early in your pregnancy, you kind of get ahead of a lot of issues. They can help you through your pregnancy, especially if you're having any discomfort. My daughter sat on my bladder from the moment that uh, she was heavy enough to impact that, it felt like. So thank you, Kenzie, for that. But I just think it's something that a lot of moms just assume that it's normal and that you're just going to have to pee yourself every time you go to the gym and that's just what happens. But it is not the case. And uh, if you both get ahead of it while you're pregnant and then start to do physiotherapy six weeks weeks postpartum, you can really um, get ahead of a lot of those issues. And it's something that you don't want to wait on. So if you're a horse girl Mm -hmm. who is a bottom half horse, this obviously doesn't apply. Oh, no. I think even for um, horses, when they give birth, it's uh, important for them to, you know, get back into shape and work yeah. on their pelvic floor. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know a little something about this. <laughs> horses give birth when they're a lot younger than humans too. So, they, they haven't had time to build up a strong pelvic floor. I suppose. I don't know if that's, I mean, they do give birth younger than humans. I mean, they can also have a prolapse and that's when the insides come outside. And that's and a, that you never good. You don't want that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, I took your very nice, good, serious <laughs> thing. I, I can't, can't stop bringing up the horse stuff because I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, but the, thank you again uh, for the, the mommy minute too. If there's any like anyone else out there, new mom, expecting mom, you have a, t- a tip to share mm-hmm. uh, with us or even something to ask a question about, whatever it is. Yeah. And if yeah. you have any other medical questions, Aaron would be happy to answer them. I'll take a stab at and it. Any, any veterinary questions about the birthing process of horses, a lunge your yeah. Guy. yeah yeah i'll take that one just as a, it's a hot more of a hobby though it is a profession <laughs> yeah i don't get i don't get paid for it so <laughs> all right run the disclaimer ted <laughs> <laughs> oh okay well i thank you again aaron for the mommy minute and i guess so uh, we'll move right in to deer call <laughs> did that deer just give birth yeah <laughs> yeah it was, or it was disappointed or something <laughs> Yeah, that that deer has had a rough week. <laughs> Get loose, ride that horse. Get loose. Yay! Yay! <laughs> better horse noises than deer noises. Yeah, I'm a horse guy now. We don't need to get back into this. He's a horse guy. I know the answer. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Top half. Top half. Yeah. <laughs> Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause. With $2 from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Cilantro and Chive, your favorite new destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversation, and fun. It's just that simple. And uh, hey, go in and, and get yourself an old beer at either a Cilantro and Chive location. So uh, we've mentioned that already, but thank you again, Riley, uh, for uh, bringing those on board. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, hey, we have two $25 Cilantro and Chive gift cards to give away as we do with every deer call. All you have to do is uh, watch for the deer call to be posted on Instagram and Facebook, comment, and then you'll be in the draw to win uh this time i I did go on like basic this time go figure but it is uh you know a sad time of year for me especially where summer really is coming to a close uh i don't i'm not down with people like in august talking about the pumpkin spice this and that oh so excited for fall once it's here we can embrace it so i did ask uh just what's your favorite thing about fall we did get some of 
pretty like I give them stock answers, I yeah. guess, obvious answers, but also uh, some different ones. But I, I think it's something uh, just to, this is going to help talk me through my end of summer blues. So uh, our first winner, uh, Leanne, said this is more, I guess, now because ASMR is a big thing, too. But walking through all the crunchy leaves or like you know, if you're a kid or what's me, ASMR audio. I actually don't know what it stands for, but you know, like all the t- videos and stuff where it's just like, or like the yeah, cutting yeah. of everything. It's basically like sounds that like satisfying sounds. Okay. So like the, the sound of leaves crunching is like okay. ASMR, right? Or jumping in leaves is fun. Now, I guess the only time is if you're trying to like follow someone through the woods, that might be more of a scary. summertime ac- activity with no crunchy leaves, but, mm-hmm. but, uh, <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm just saying that I'm trying to. Anyway. We have a wide audience. Yeah, if you're into who's... that, if you're into that sort of thing, <laughs> and... like stalking or kidnapping. <laughs> okay. But yeah. I honestly, the one thing I don't is if you are just walking and like you're, you know, walking faster than someone in front of you, and they can hear the crunching leaves, and they do think you're like creeping up on them or something. I actually remember it was two summers ago when it was like that crazy one of the crazy heat waves, and it was like 30 degrees even at night. We recorded a podcast, went super late. I came home and I thought, it's midnight, it's 30 degrees, I'm brave, and I'm going to take my dog for a walk. Oof. And then there was a poor man walking behind me, and I got scared, and Jeez. then I called my husband. And so I was like, I just, you know, like somebody's walking behind me. I'm almost home because he was at work. I get home and I'm going into the house and this poor man, like, I think he realized that I was feeling uncomfortable. Well, so I thought then, you were like talking about his financial status when you said the no, poor man no, behind me. No, so why is that important? He was a yeah. normal man who was also yeah. out for a walk at that time of night, going, coming. I don't know, yeah. but I got a little nervous. And then I was like going to my house and he very kindly sensed that I was stressed out about it and stopped. And I think he just pretended to tie his shoe and then crossed the road <laughs> so that he didn't feel like he was following yeah. me to the house. Or he knew he knew you were on to him and, <laughs> Maybe and then either aborted, way. aborted whatever yeah. he was going to do. Well, great story about Sorry. Paul. It's okay. Sorry. I got us there. That's my yeah. fault. Yeah. But uh, the other, this is obvious for a lot of us. The other winner was Ashley and Shani also said uh, football starts in the fall, NFL football. Um, for me, that's the biggest thing that I, I get excited for. Like, yeah, the NHL will be back, I guess, by the time this podcast comes out, the Red Deer Rebels will have already started their regular season. But some about football to know like you can just waste a whole Sunday watching it, I think is, uh, you know, it brings people together with fantasy football. I know I think uh, Kevin's landlord is even slowly coming around to football and at the very least you just go out somewhere and uh, eat some junky food and have a couple beers and watch the game with your friends so yeah for me football is is a big one um one, i don't know if anyone add this to the list but i don't have ac in my house so just getting those hot nights done and over with and not wow. having your house be 30 degrees it at is. night well because your ba- it is like if you go with lund has a split level house upstairs and downstairs on a hot day is like a 10 to 15 degree difference yeah and it gets i mean it's a lot cooler in the basement where i sleep but then when you have lund crawl in in the middle of the night it gets a, a little toastier so i am i mean i'll miss you but it is nice to have yeah. a bed to myself again yeah yeah that's <laughs> why yeah that's why i like fall <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is it is the the weather. Kim did say sweater weather too. I think a lot of people oh, prefer yeah, like that. Weather. The and the, it is fall fashion is is a big thing. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I, I think I lost it, but someone there said fall fashion, which again you never know by the pajamas she wears to the podcast. But Aaron, you're like a big like thrift store fall fashion type. Of yeah, person. I do love yeah. a sweater <laughs> and a thrift store. Uh, Tina said the colors, which. Yeah, again, is like a pretty pretty obvious answer there. Karen said no mosquitoes. Oh, but I think yeah. I speak for everyone when I say, hey, I did not see one mosquito this whole entire summer. But the fucking wasps, wasps yeah. is insane. Yeah. And, but that's how Lund's gotten his exercise. Because I've never seen anyone like react more why like thrash about when a wasp is around like i get it you don't want to get bit but you go like you get like a full full body yeah, just, calorie burn when you're going <laughs> yeah just protecting my myself you, oh. you never know where they're gonna sting you you never know how bad it's gonna hurt and i'd rather just not be stung so if i can do anything to prevent that i will That's fair. i've never had anyone tell me what a good purpose of the wasp is i don't think there like, is i don't think there is either yeah i get the no. bumblebee but the yeah. wasp yeah. or the hornet when i think it's the, like there's a huge population of aphids this year 
which wasps eat. So then uh, they're, they're mm. like colonization they're was fat just, and, yeah, yeah, it was just and they they it was just the right conditions for the colonies to thrive. But it, yeah, it's been it's I know every year this time of year the wasps get bad, but it's been like it a, like I've never seen. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what eats wasps? What should we bring in to take care of this wasp <laughs> issue? <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't, I don't know, know what know. that's. I know bats eat mosquitoes, you know, but maybe spend less time worrying about horse births and learn a little more about wasps. Yeah, we'll I know it. there yeah. was an old lady who swallowed a fly. No, no and then there's no I wasps in think that. they sent in a bird to get the fly, then a cat to get the bird. Yeah, but that has nothing. This to do sounds with like wasps. a nursery rhyme. It, no, it is. is. Oh, <laughs> there, there was, was an old lady, lady who, who lived swallowed in a, a shoe. fly. Oh, and then, I don't know I don't... why she swallowed that fly. Yeah, there's a whole I guess book. she'll die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a dark ending to Whoa, that. Did you just yeah. make that up? I did not, but I could have. Okay, yeah. well, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, yeah, we'll figure it out for next episode. <laughs> what takes care of the wasps All right. uh bailey said this is right up lund's alley for sure perfect weather for long walks hmm. <laughs> that's very true like it just yeah it in is. the in the in the hot summer heat you just start sweaty yeah. it gets yeah. gross you like crunch yeah. through the leaves yeah. wear a nice sweater yeah uh, <laughs> shelby said a pumpkin spice everything of course which is uh, i think even red heart i think they just put out a, a pumpkin spice beer which uh which i think i think is funny because they obviously did it because pumpkin spice everything but then Kayleen said, making fun of all the pumpkin spice people. So you can't really have one without the other. That's true. That's true. Are you, you're not, you're, I feel like you're not a pumpkin spice guy. I'm not, but I'm willing to try it. I mean, I love, I love it, but not like, what did this year they rolled out the pumpkin spice latte, like third week of August yeah. or something stupid. Like, like the that. spirit of Halloween store opened in August. Yeah. yeah. Like every year it gets earlier and it's it so frustrating. Yeah. Let me enjoy the yeah. dog days of like summer. Like October 1st, I'll think about Halloween. Yeah. yeah. But I don't like my, and my kids see it. So then in August, we're like searching for Halloween costumes and yeah. their minds are going to change 18 times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just sounds like a, I don't understand why we're so early. It sounds like a brilliant move on the yeah. real retailers. Yeah. <laughs> you say the realtors. Yeah. Good job, Andrew yeah. Russell. Yeah. On the retailers job. Well, well, what do you think? We're, there's probably a, a certain big box store that has very cheap hot dogs that you can get. The probably they already have Christmas stuff out. So yeah, I was there last night. Else. There was some Christmas stuff like right when you walk yeah. in. I thought, really? In September. Yeah. Wow. Like at least wait till October. Uh -huh. Like Mariah Carey has not defrosted yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> So no, Michael don't Buble think, still in his cage. Yeah, yeah, like just let them be. Boney M November is first. still just getting Rasputin plays at weddings and that's it. Everyone just needs to chill, okay? Just huh. chill. Um, no one actually really mentioned anything about Halloween because that is like later fall. Mm -hmm. But that's a fun time of year, but that comes later. Brittany is uh, really uh, speaking my language on this one and that's soup season. Yeah. It is like soup is an any time of year thing, but there's so, I always like make a like to make a big pot of chili too. That uh, mm -hmm. I always make so much. Kevin always gets some extra too, but it's just not like a summer food. It doesn't yeah. feel right. Remember, yeah. Lund, one time you ordered a soup in the in the summertime at a pub in Canmore, yeah, no. and he goes, the guy goes, "Who the hell ordered the soup?" Lund looks at us, goes, "Did I just get fucking chirped <laughs> by the bus boy?" <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It wasn't any of his business. It was, but it was like thirty degrees. <laughs> yeah, I remember at night. Well, soup looked good. I felt like soup. There's no rule. No, there's Why no else rule. would they have it on the menu if they don't like allow people to order soup in the summertime? I, Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Yeah. It was July 14th. It was plus 34. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. It, and and we, like, had just like drank, we had just drank. We had just drank 14 beers that day <laughs> yeah. playing golf. Yeah, give me the soup. <laughs> hey, from what I remember, the soup was good. I had zero regrets. <laughs> And, and as good as it was that night, how good would it be like on a fall day? Even yeah. better. Yeah. Super chilly. Like, yeah, yeah. anything that yeah. warms the soul. Um, and a big thing here in central Alberta, anywhere really this time of year, David and Kelsey both said the corn maze. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great fall activity. It's a great date idea with like first date, 600th date, doesn't matter. That's always a, yeah. a great way to, to spend an afternoon with, well, whoever, kids, the family date anything like that uh, michelle said probably the most relatable one for anyone with kids is the kids going back to school and then kathy said to getting back to a routine because su summer's awesome but even for me like a single guy with no kids it it's so hectic yeah i mean especially me with kids like the summers just get the weekends get so busy mm -hmm. that you don't really get anything done like in september we were like oh it's nice to actually like be at home not have too much planned and clean the house or yes. whatever but um same thing like routine starts sports starts school starts it's kind of a good time like work kind of picks up again and kind of things are back to normal so and uh, what Krista said, a harvest season on the farm, which I would think for farmers is like their least favorite time of the year because my goodness, they would work. I know now like the machines 
you know, there's a lot of them self-driving, whatever. They're still just out there for so mm-hmm. many mm-hmm. hours. It's insane. It's busy. It's fun too. Like you have the dinners out mm-hmm. in the field. And so it is a lot of work, but it's also if you've had a good harvest, mm-hmm. It's really rewarding as well. Um, it's funny that Lund brought up a going hunting on a horseback on his future centaur girlfriend because Alyssa said a pheasant hunting, which again, like hunt, I don't hunt, but this is the time of year for hunting. You don't, is, uh, you don't hunt? No, I just, all my friends who hunt, I, we just get uh, the extra that's right. meat. That's right, you plow. <laughs> <laughs> It is harvest season for I, Ted yeah. right now. Oh. Man, Get those seeds in. Usually I thought that joke, I'm like, oh, that joke is <laughs> no, funny. Forget it. Uh, mom, if you're listening, no. I'm sorry for the plow jokes. Okay, I hate Can all Can I of say, this. mom, I'm a hot piece of ass? <laughs> yeah. I don't even have an ass. True. true. Great personality. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just... Well, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> just a hot frog standing up. <laughs> Uh, so that was it for the answers from our listeners. Uh, mine is, I, I think what I like about fall now is September's turned into like the month to do a lot of big events. And it's turned into one of the more fun months of the year, only because a lot of the events, like everyone you know goes to them because their people aren't away on summer vacation and stuff like that. We uh, Sorry to both Kevins, you missed it this year, but we just played in the, the annual PAP Foundation Golf Tournament. Mm-hmm. That's always in September. And there's just so many events like that. Oktoberfest is is coming up. Uh, and you know what, as an MC too, I, I get pretty busy doing those events, which is always nice. So uh, something that, uh, kind of a newer development as far as fall has gone. But September somehow has become like the busiest month of the year. Mm-hmm. Well, I love fall. It is, I think, my favorite season, September especially, because my husband and I, we had our first date in September. We got married in September. But more importantly, in fall, you get a pumpkin, and you can carve it, and you can put it on your head, and you can have a pumpkin head for an afternoon and take some really fun photos. And that's my favorite thing to do in the fall. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So so the top half of the pumpkin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Yes. If you get by a big enough pumpkin, you could have the bottom half. I would. I'm not saying you're You big, know what? If someone whose bottom no, half is shaped it. like a pumpkin, it's not all that great. <laughs> you should. And then put a little like baby bonnet That's on the only way I'd ever have an baby ass. photos. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like that Gruber baby? Yeah. yeah. Wait, no. Gerber. No, it was Gerber. Oh, and Gettys. And Gettys? Yeah. The Gruber baby. By the way. <laughs> The Gerber baby. Yeah. Yes. Did you say Gruber? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, whatever. Hey, that's a know what I mean, not what I say yeah. type of thing. Yeah. I knew I was close. Yeah. Look at that little Gruber. <laughs> um, yeah, my I think my favorite thing about fall, yeah, like you said before, Ted, it, with a lot of our friends having kids and getting the kids back to school in fall, it does kind of open up a lot of people's Septembers to maybe do a few more things. Mm-hmm. I guess it depends how old your kids are and how many extracurricular activities are involved in but summers are just so busy for for almost everybody so it does kind of feel like after summer is over you get to kind of regroup with your friends or regroup with family and get back into a rhythm i don't have anything super original outside of the answers we got on instagram but what a basic white pumpkin. i know i'm so yeah. basic put a pumpkin on your head have some um, but yeah the like Football and hockey starting, that's great. But there's almost like nothing better than just one of those quintessential like early September days where it's like nice crisp, like eight degrees in the morning Mm -hmm. and then it's like slowly climbs and then all of a sudden it's like 22 degrees in the afternoon, but then it gets nice and cool again, like Lund said, just before bed. Like that is just, that's like just a perfect day. The temperature swings are crazy right now though. Cause like when I leave the house around five, it's It's cold. Yesterday we hit zero yeah, and then Mm -hmm. it was 23 degrees. So like it's it's like, I mean, I only work till 10 a.m. So it doesn't matter. But like there's you have to bring like different clothes and like bring an yeah. extra jacket or ditch your jacket or whatever because the, the temperature swings are crazy. But you're right. Like it is the, the, the crisp fall morning type of thing is, is pretty nice. Yeah. For me, I think we kind of talked about it. Like for one, definitely reprieve from the heat. Um, I know earlier this month here in September, there was a couple of days where we still were like plus 33 and we had a great summer, I think. Mm-hmm. And that second day in September of the plus 30, like I was just with it i just thought this is 
too much. It's too much. I'm done. Um, So I echo your comments, Kev, about just kind of the cooler nights. And again, just like getting for a family, getting back into the routine. It's kind of nice. And the kids starting school and they're all starting like something new. Like it's kind of exciting. It's exciting. And they're like getting new routines and new friends. And um, so, yeah, it's just kind of the, you know, new year of sports and all that stuff. So um, just it's kind of like a new new beginnings Mm -hmm. type of thing after a really good summer. So, um, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. And I think Dustin maybe mentioned our last podcast or he has at some point, like, it seems like the summers are extending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I look today, like, you know, late September, we're going to still be highs yeah. of 24. Yeah. Well, I think Thanksgiving last year, like mid-October yeah. was about 28 because I remember golfing. And it, yeah. was, it was hot. It's, I was it's crazy. Shorts, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it, it's nice to be able to kind of experience, a you know, nice still outside and um, even like going for runs or stuff around the mm-hmm. trails and you yeah. don't get like, it's not too hot where you're like, this is not mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty basic stuff. Yeah, but. It, it is basic, but yeah. I mean, kind of by by design because yeah. that's, everyone equates loving fall with, with being basic, but we're just trying to shine a positive light. Uh, we will not be asking this question about winter because winter is just straight ball sack. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but hey, on that lovely note, uh, thank you to everyone, as always, uh, who participated uh, in our deer call. Keep your eyes open for our next deer call on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, keep on commenting for your chance to win a gift card. What's your preferred animal, top half or bottom half? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And vote honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'll be a separate. I'll let you post that on your personal <laughs> Instagram. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, now we're going to move on to, uh, because we were talking about back to school. Uh, thank you, as always, coworker Aaron, as like the day of, the day before, as I text you and Kevin in a panic. Well, guess what? I didn't think of a game. But uh, I know uh, back when we did Dustin versus Lund, Kathleen, one of our, well, was a listener. I don't know if she still listens or not, but a uh, teacher made like a little bit of a fourth grade test for you guys. So we're basically all going to do that again. Yeah, I uh, Google are you smarter than a fifth grader questions and oh. i then copied and pasted them onto my phone all right so this is a, obviously aaron you're gonna ask a question we're all gonna answer on our whiteboards here um the loser we decided uh, just now talking about uh, t- it doesn't have to necessarily be a picture with a giant pumpkin but someone has no. to do a nice a photo <laughs> especially because these these firefighter photos are getting pretty tired it has to do a nice photo shoot in some kind of fall like basically like an Ann gettys or the gruber baby yeah as, as you <laughs> put it yeah it no i want to see a sleeping man in a pumpkin patch yeah, yeah. and uh, because this is basically are you smarter than a fifth grader but uh yeah we, we got to avoid copyright so this is uh are you more intelligent than a, t- than a young Element- 10 year old t- yeah uh working title we'll figure out the title by the a month later when i finally put this on youtube but okay so mm-hmm. we we know what we're doing how many questions are there i've got 25 how many oh, do you actually want to do i think 10 yeah. 10 yeah. Okay, 10 best and then of we 10. can roll into t- tiebreaker if there's two people tied for i'll see the or, loser in a pumpkin is just, patch is it just 10 questions and if three people are tied for loser three people are in the <laughs> yeah. pumpkin there. patch yeah. 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 yeah yeah question number one what is the process of water turning into vapor called oh also, all of these, you're like, you're going to be mad when you don't get them. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> One's like... already mad. I think I'm right. I'm going to go first. Evaporation. It, in fact, was evaporation. 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 Nice. Everyone got it? It took me a while, but I got there. You got there. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, everyone uh, has one point. What does a paleontologist study? This is a bit of a trick question. I'm going to lose half a point from the, the game master for this answer, but that's okay. Fuck okay. it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I said uh, because she's going to be one in like a month, uh, Aaron's one of them, fossils. Good answer, Ted. Yeah. Oh, fossils. I said dinosaur bones slash fossils. Oh, I said bones. No. Oh, fossils. Oh, come on. Kevin said bones. I didn't know you could have two yeah. guesses. I'll give you fossils. Give him half a point. No. I originally wrote down dinosaurs. Also, me. I was thinking yeah, all I could think of was Ross from Friends. I, that, I would, if you you shouldn't have said it was a trick question, yeah, I think I, we all would have put. I would have put dinosaurs yeah. for sure. All right, that was a, that was a gimme. So Lund Lund is behind by one point. That's fine. What are the three states of matter? I think we're smarter than you're giving us credit for here. You may have to. No, not Kevin. It. <laughs> I think you've stumped him. He probably did put down also, yeah, North Dakota, South Dakota. You should Dakota. be smarter than a fifth grader. Yeah, but like when we did the fourth grade test, like that stuff, that, like yeah, the regions. A lot and all of those that, are very specific I, about like yeah. memorizing clouds and trees and dinosaurs. Yeah, I tried to make it somewhat accessible yeah. for you guys. Right. Solid so, liquid gas. Yep. Solid liquid gas. Yep. Oh, so no. vapor. Oh. <laughs> See? 
Like, what is that third one? <laughs> okay. Smarty pants. Oh, no. A oh. word, phrase, or sequence that reads the same forward and backward is called what? Like race car. You don't look so sure, Lundy. So maybe you go first. I'll say anagram. Nope. That's not a bad. Yeah, that, that's what I had I as also well. I had an anagram. Yeah. How about a palindrome? Take your uh, right. Uh, what, what's an anagram? As soon as you said anagram it. Anagram is where you like rearrange uh, the letters uh, of the same uh, word. That was a tough one, Eric. Thought so. Here's uh, oh, no, let's not go there. Which blood type is known as the universal recipient? Recipient. Mm-hmm. I said B plus. I said AB. I said AB positive. Oh, negative. Lundy gets it. A B. Yeah, your A B. No, it's your. That's the most rare. I think. Your A B. Is it? Oh, I yeah. think so. Isn't, isn't AB? So am I wrong? Because I put Dylan? a plus. I think so. Fuck. Yeah, you're way off, buddy. But A B. He didn't have a negative. What's the? No, he's A B. A B is the answer. Oh, a B. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even sure you can be A B positive I'm, I'm or negative. I'm trying to learn here. Duh. I think uh, it's just A B. Okay. Hmm. So I've got four. Lund has three. The athlete has three. Walsh has two. I also took these off the internet. If they're wrong, it's not my fault. Riley, look it up right now. <laughs> Universal blood type, please. Well, no, she said recipient and not recipient. donor. Yeah. I think O, I think o, is, o the donor. is donor. Oh, okay. That's okay. So yeah. I was, in the question I was answering, I was right. I just didn't listen. All right. I'm asking this one because of Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, oh yeah. No. I'll know this. Universal soldier. Yeah. What's the capital of Belgium? Ooh. Oh, I said Brussels. It's Brussels. Yeah, yeah the muscles okay. from Brussels. I didn't say yeah. Brussels. You, oh my you were goodness! One had chocolate. That was, was like a capital. total guess on my part. I couldn't. Wow. I was trying to think of Brussels. I, just, I almost put Bruges. Oh no, that's what I was trying to think yeah. of. This is that movie. What type of animal can live on both water and land? Ha! I know this. Kev, okay, you go first. <laughs> Amphibian. Correct. It is an amphibian. Yeah. So I have six. I have four. Okay. Five. Four. Ooh, two little boys in a pumpkin patch. We got. We got. We got, we got. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you want to tag team this? <laughs> okay. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which is the fastest bird on foot? I totally. I think it's an ostrich. It's an ostrich. It's an ostrich. 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 Yeah. Look at you. you. Guys must know birds. This is very too. confidence yeah. building. Yeah. Two questions left. All right. Let's go math. Oh, no. If a shopping cart contains one apple, two bananas, three oranges, and four hot dogs, what percentage of the cart's total contents is fruit? One apple, two bananas, three oranges, four hot dogs. Percentage <laughs> of fruit. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> so it's okay. like what Ted gets it. Costco. And now when you eat these bananas, eye contact or no eye contact? Well, I'll look at the video of you and Kevin eating bananas, and I'm pretty sure there's some serious eye contact. <laughs> did, you draw, did you draw it out? Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I drew, the, shop, I drew the shopping cart. You drew yeah. the shopping cart? <laughs> no. Did you? Oh, I was just saying, <laughs> if you did, you have to show your work. <laughs> 60%? Yeah, 60 percent. Yeah, sixty percent. Mathletes. Yeah. All okay. right. Come on. Okay. Come on. Ask a hard one, Aaron. Yeah. All right. Ask a hard one. Well, last one. What do you mean hard one? You're losing. What planet is closest to the sun? Fuck. I hate space. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather be trapped in space or at the bottom of the ocean oh space for sure yeah i agree ocean's, ocean's so terrifying. scary we don't yeah, know anything about so we don't know anything about the ocean no. No. don't mess with the ocean man. no does it's... anyone else get anxiety when you see like videos of deep yeah. trenches oh. i can't watch like those people that like free dive no oh. that's no, that's you. crazy no like what's the point no. we have I... the technology now. i'm gonna go as far as i can and i'm gonna pass out i can't even watch movies about submarines freaks me out Makes me feel claustrophobic, oh. itchy. All right, what's don't, closest don't, to the sun? Don't tell him because he doesn't know. And this well, is yeah, big. We have no answer over here. This Anyone else big. sing through the whole Sailor Moon theme song to remember all the planets? What? No, I didn't watch Sailor Moon. Oh. No, no. Oh. All right, Mercury, Mercury. Mercury. Earth. Oh. <laughs> it was Mercury. Oh. How do you know that? Everyone knows that. Fuck. So now I got to do this photo shoot by myself. That's yeah. ten. Yeah, you do. Right. <laughs> Earth just cost you. <laughs> I've got a bonus question. Oh, okay. okay. Good. Just for this podcast. What's the plural form of the word deer? What is the plural floor? Florm? Florm. Florm. I've had too many mints. <laughs> 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 I've had too many mints, though. <sighs> Plural form oh, of the word. Oh, it's funny because our deer. podcast is oh dear. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Way to put that Smart. together. Thank you. All right. Let's see them, boys. Deer. Deer. It is, in fact, deer. 
<laughs> kit. Kit? I think it's like there's like a kit of foxes is oh, what you'd like. Oh. Yeah, no. I thought it was- some, Just like oh, this. Oh, like a group of like a business yeah. of ferrets. I yeah. yeah. I think what is- Murder what of would crows. Be deer? Yeah. What would be deer? A deer. Herd. Is They're it a herd? herd? Yeah. Is it? yeah, I don't know. All right, well- uh, good news for everyone new uh, uh, like seeing Kevin maybe with his shirt off. <laughs> you are like the cutest little guy on this podcast by far, so it makes sense that you got to do yeah, the man. I feel like we photo. could get like interesting. Yeah, I think this if we could fun. somehow turn this into like a, I do some stuff for this, but then I can turn it into like a family photo shoot. Yeah, then I might get like it's a win win. Yeah. All right. So, I think you can figure that, that out. Yeah. Yeah. Lundy, if, I'll put you in charge of that. And if this goes well, we honestly might look at a full calendar in the future of all okay. of us. But we'll see how this goes. Uh, don't forget to mow Lund's lawn. Yeah. I would also say if you're a photographer and are interested mm. in our Man Getty's calendar, hit yeah. us up. Yeah, we've only ruined the lives of three photographers thus far, so. It's weird. Every time we have to do like a formal shoot, it's always got to be someone new. Yeah, and usually a dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to Strybosh for, he didn't he's new to this podcast. He doesn't know that we don't follow through on all these things, but I did mow lawns after like we left it for a couple of weeks, then it rained for like a week straight. So uh-huh. it was a, it was tough. Yeah, I w- there was a lot, lot of grass. I think I had between your... Front, your front's smaller than your back. <laughs> Ew. Um, Actually, yeah. well, <laughs> I don't think you'd like that. You're yeah. a top guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't go around. Look, Lund's front is what? adequate. I think I had about like six or seven bag dumps. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a lot. It was a lot of grass. Yeah. And then I yeah, finished finished job. five minutes before our fantasy football draft. Perfect so it time. all worked out. Yeah. yeah. See, see, Cap, how easy it is. <laughs> Sounds sounds easy. So we'll see how many bag dumps you have. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably only three or four right now. Yeah. Hey, hey, I did reach out a couple weeks ago and yeah, asked about I, your lawn. Mm-hmm. And I said I didn't need it because I, I know. just done it. Think about for Kevin though, like a uh, long grab. I'd be like, he's in uh, like Honey, I Shrunk the I Kids. I was thinking of Honey, I <laughs> Shrunk the Kids. Ken, he's, he's out there mowing. He yeah. just can't see him. We might have to attach a flag. Yeah, he's riding so an ant out there. <laughs> Great movie. A full, a full ant. 100% hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you should do a calendar like that. <laughs> Where I'm riding an ant. Yeah. Like the whole Honey, I Shrunk the Kids calendar. Right. Okay, we got lots of ideas, but uh, that's, right. I think we do need to wrap up this episode. Uh, you, you know what? I feel like it's an end of a date because I'm saying uh, I am so sorry for all of this, but uh, that does just about do it for this episode as always. Uh, I don't know where this is going to go. Wrap things up with everyone's final thoughts. Uh, I think they need to bring back a sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. There's like three. Yeah, yeah. but a new one. Oh, a new like one. A new yeah. modern one. Mm. Maybe with all the kids growing up now. Mm. I'd only do it if Rick Moranis is yeah. there. Oh, yeah. He'll be in it for sure. What, do you uh, speak for him? Uh, <laughs> yeah, me and Ricky go back. <laughs> He's retired. I know. For a long time. Yeah. yeah. No, he'll come out of retirement yeah. for this. Was, it, was that it? Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah I just... <laughs> Way to work the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> why would you put a night. why would you put a camera there if you didn't want me to work it? <laughs> it, was just, it, was, not it. it was just it was so well done. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, someone else go. <laughs> I really enjoyed the horse chat. That was, <laughs> that was my that was my probably my favorite yeah. time that I have spent yeah. on it this was podcast. The main part it was of the show. It, it was really uh, Again, you know it was really it. a genuine conversation, yeah. and I think that's what made it so good. Yeah. Um, and I'm really happy I didn't lose a game because I feel like I lose a game every time yeah, I'm yeah. on here. Yeah. It's been a tough go for Kevin's in these games. I know, but yeah. when we first started, he was winning quite a bit at the yeah. beginning. So I think he's, it all balances out. No, I, no, <laughs> this didn't go great for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll see. I mean, I'm going to move on and I really hope that there's a photography out there that can like work <laughs> with us and, you know, make this work. So. <laughs> You should also like brush up on your planets and just and space <laughs> yeah. space in general. I just I don't it's so far away I don't pay any attention yeah, to it. Like yeah. I'm shocked that you knew the- Well, here's the thing is just remember like Mercury temperature closest to the sun. That's how that's mm. how I remember it. Makes sense. Yeah, what about the Does other what, what about the other seven planets? Is Pluto back to being no. a planet or is it was it kicked out? It's kicked out. I think it's kicked out. So yeah, there's only seven See? more. 
Mm-hmm. Things are always changing in space. I don't know what's going on. That was it. That was yeah. Your final yeah. 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 I had a lovely time. Thank you. you the cough went. Maybe though all those smints somehow. No, it. I think it. it, it yeah. yeah. Uh, I like. I have a like. Yeah, you sound great. Wicked tummy ache right now oh, from yeah. eating nothing but mints for the last yeah. two hours. But if there's any a respiratory like doctors out there, and maybe message us because Aaron needs to come see you. Does real this bad. sound bad? <laughs> No, that's, that's, that's pretty normal. Like you're falling in that's sick normal. on a day yeah. that you just want to go shopping. I wouldn't waste your time with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Calgary tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, you have emphysema. Uh, <laughs> with that, another episode of Oh Dear comes to a close mercifully, as always. A huge thank you once again to our episode sponsor, the Red Deer and District Chamber, and to our special guest, Scott Robinson, who uh, uh, <laughs> surprisingly left, he was hanging out left right after the horse chat ended. So uh, he said, okay, that's enough. Maybe I might get a message from him later to remove him from this episode. I don't know. A reminder, my goodness, a reminder as always, uh, why I don't know why you would follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. There will be a poll about which half of a horse girl you would prefer coming out very soon. Horse I like person. Yeah, horse person. Horse guy or girl. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. We were just talking about horse girl before. So uh, subscribe to our YouTube page and uh, if you're uh, listening to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave us a review. It ain't going to be a good one. Uh, thank you as always to our presenting sponsor, Bose Bar and Stage, and of course to Riley for having us once again at Communal Creative Studios. Uh, of course, last Last but not least, a thank you to you for tuning in once again. So for Kevin Walsh, Ryan Lund, co-worker Aaron, and the athlete Kevin Strybosch, I'm Ted Emmett, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>